In this episode of the podcast, we're talking to Jiva, the arm collector, Santana. Now, Jiva is world-renowned as one of the best practitioners and instructors of jiu-jitsu. In fact, if you watch UFC, from time to time, you might even hear the commentators bringing up his name as being one of the best coaches in the sport. Today, you're going to find him at his gym, One BJJ Fitness in Tustin. And in this episode, we're going to talk about a whole bunch. This has been one of my favorite episodes and an absolute honor. We're going to talk about his experience growing up in the slums and how jujitsu gave him purpose and essentially led to everything that he has today. We're also going to talk about the benefits of jujitsu and what it can do for the everyday person, even though you and I might not have any aspirations when it comes to professional fighting. Along those lines, though, it's worth noting that Jiva did have a professional MMA career where he went 18 and three. And just for context, that is enough to be a world champion today. Most of his wins were by armbar submissions, hence the name, The Arm Collector. Anyway, I'm incredibly excited for this episode. I'm honored to have Jiva in here. I'm even more honored to have him as a friend and my own jujitsu instructor. So let's go ahead and jump in. This is the TSS Podcast. It's a place for authentic conversations to uncover the stupid simple truths that help us succeed and find happiness. Welcome to Think Stupid Simple. This is an honor for me. Okay. This is a huge honor for me, but we start off every episode with some candles. We set the mood, Professor. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. It's a very romantic thing to be saying with another man in here, but but you know. Right um, the candles. <laughs> these are, it gets me in the mood, you know, like you, like as an athlete, you do certain things to get you in the zone, right? Yeah. Yeah. These are, this is my content creation zone. Yeah. Can we do this in the gym? <laughs> Maybe light some candles. Yeah, we can. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. So back, you know, back in the day on our gym, like back home, yeah, that was a funny thing. Uh, when I was in out of school, still out of club, people was like, "You guys are men," because my professor is all like into holistic and come and forward, professor. So you're right like, there. I went to like holistic and and uh, candles and everything. So we roll, we kill each other, <laughs> and then he out at somebody like, "Hey." Warm up the water. Let's make the tea. Because <laughs> we drink tea after practice. Like you drip in sweat. Yeah. You get a pot of tea and you sit Just in a circle talking about tea. the practice and drink hot tea. It's like, and then people that can come visit us is like, you guys are mean, man. You guys beat us up and then <laughs> come up afterwards with that tea that I don't know what's <laughs> with tea time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny thing. So, Professor, I am honored to have you here. Thank you for coming in. Um, and just a little bit of a, a background. I, I've already introduced you at this point. Well, you don't know this yet, but there will okay. be an introduction that okay. goes on to this podcast, and, mm -hmm. and they know kind of a little bit about who you are. They know that you're the arm collector. Yeah. Um, but I met you actually uh, at your gym. Um, you are my first legit instructor. Um, and honestly, now having gone to a few different gyms, just like, traveling and, and getting kind of to experience it, it was crazy to me to see the difference in, uh, I guess, teaching quality between the different gyms. Is that, is, I suppose that's not unusual for you, like to, to see that in jujitsu. Yeah, I mean, um, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be like, no, I mean, I think jujitsu is the same and then people have different ways to teach right yeah and then i keep thinking back like what put me because i got a lot of people saying that and then it's a bittersweet yeah because i'm gonna try to explain what's bittersweet for me because <laughs> like everybody that moves away they master him back like hey man you ruined for me <laughs> i was like how did i do that you had fun here it's like yeah i had too much fun class was too great and I can't find anything like that. You spoil me too much. It's true. Yeah. It's 100% true. And then I was like, and then I keep thinking because it shouldn't be that way, right? Yeah. I think everybody should find a place that, because jujitsu is beneficial way, way, way beyond uh, I square where you go there to get a world medal. Yeah. It's beneficial. Like my life, it's, it's all through jujitsu. Yeah. You know? I think at this point I live more through jiu-jitsu than without having jiu-jitsu in my life. I'm 49 and I trained jiu-jitsu since I was 19. That's so crazy. 30 years in this. Yeah. So, 
And then uh, I keep thinking like, I make what's the bittersweet part is, think about it. I have people that they train somewhere and then they come to my gym and then they're like, man, you make me love jujitsu again. Yeah. I want to be here. I want to be part of this. You know, I want to be, I want to belong here. It's like, you already do. Yeah. Because you're here. You know what I mean? Everybody that comes here and stay, they belong here. You know what I mean? You're part of the, the team, the family. We all call each other family. And then it seems like as a cliche, call people family, but I don't see my brothers and my sister for years. And I see you when we're training normal, like way much more Three, than four I times see, a yeah, week. Yeah, way much more than I see a sibling or, or, or something like that. Yeah. So that's what we call family. And then got me think talking to my wife, Erica, the other day. She was like, I was like, now think about it. I was even going to write something about it to post. Now think about how many people went to a wrong gym got discouraged yeah. and never tried jiu-jitsu again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that makes me feel sad because it's like, there's gyms for everywhere. I'm not saying my gym is the best one. That's the, the only one. There's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of people training. But sometimes you choose the one that's not for you. And you go over there, you have a bad experience. Like, hey, I'm done with jiu-jitsu. I don't want to do that again. Yeah. You know, and, and that part just like upsets me because jiu-jitsu thing should be for everybody. Yeah, this is this is something that is it's going to be interesting for a lot of our listeners because a lot of the people that follow this podcast, at least so far, are creatives. They're they're photographers, they're cinematographers, they're artists, they're aspiring kind of professional creatives, and they don't even know that not only am I super into MMA, but mm. into jujitsu and practicing jujitsu, and so this is going to be completely new territory for them. Just hearing this but i want to also set the stage a little bit because i was watching um cheeto's fights uh we'll we'll briefly talk about kind of yeah. your experience with cheeto you have a lot of professional fighters and have had a lot of you fought professionally yourself um but as i'm listening and the commentator it was daniel cormier and stipe miocic commentating and here's stipe and stipe goes yeah he's training with um now he's switched over and he's now with jiva santana the arm collector world-class jiu-jitsu coach and i'm like that's my coach that's my coach this is right on ufc and i'm like that's that's my guy so there's uh, the first thing that i want to ask just for this broad audience i want to i want to hear your perspective on why people should be involved in jiu-jitsu it's uh I, I have I teach kids. I'm gonna start with the kids. That's the easy way to see oh, yeah. the way I do the, what, what I do with the kids. Right? Life is not fair. No, you know, no. we know that. Yeah. Life is not fair. You can see right now we're living <laughs> through it, so you can't tell. So what I do, what I try to do, with my kids. I even I even warned the par parents that I'm gonna do this. I was like, hey, expect that your child not gonna leave this place for three days consecutive with a smile on their face. Yeah. You know, they're not always going to be happy here, but I'm pretty sure this is going to help them through life tremendously, right? Yeah. And jiu-jitsu is a sport that, or martial arts, that it's really a humbling experience. For you, sure. You know that as well. <laughs> you experience that as well. So for the kids, like, kids, like, you know, they have that thing that they always want to be confident and they're always going to come up strong and then they look at class and then you you can see them like really well and then like he, he, they keep looking that one that they can beat and they go over there and beat that yeah. kid and then maybe the kid's on a bad day and i let that happen i let uh -huh. he bust his bust his confidence that day go home happy but then if i start notice that's a habit like yeah. i want to want to only want to pick the ones that i can't beat for sure yeah i start making changes like oh so why don't you go roll with that one and the face change yeah. and the experience change and they go home sad they come in the next day i boost a little bit so i keep equalizing that yeah so what i want to do i want to make them understand that life is like that some days are great some days are not so great yeah so but for us professional adults and everything it's the same way right like one thing that i tell a lot like for professionals at the gym was like if you're having a bad day on a job right it's the day that you were counting on it it's like you you planned that everything was gonna go smooth that day yeah but then everything went opposite way you know my recommendation to you is like don't go home don't go straight home stop at the gym interesting roll here leave everything here 
Don't take on your kids. Don't take on your wife. Because I know when you get out of the mat, your mindset will be totally different. See, Professor, this is why I'm getting my ass kicked every day at the gym. Because there's a lot of people that are having bad days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the point, right? Like, So what I mean is like, you're having a bad day and then you, you're going to, you're gonna put on somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's fair. Bring it home. You know what I mean? Like in general, for anybody. And I don't think it's fair. You like if you have a bad day, you bring that inside your house. So jujitsu is there for this as well, for yeah. all, many other things. But like I have people that they come in, they walk in, you see the assembly, the face they looking down, like really tense. Yeah. It's like, hey, what's up? It's like, I'm good. <laughs> but you see that good's not there usually good that you get every yeah. day i was like okay he gotta grind a little bit today get some sweat to change his mindset to see that things can get better can get worse <laughs> but it's just the day that the just the way that the day goes the life goes so they train and after practice so how you feel good you're gonna go home now yes feel better i do you know what i mean so just get that sweat so i think it's important because it, the humbling experience also this is talking about physical yeah. Uh, chemistry, the way you feel, the way your body feels, the endorphins and everything. But technically, if you feel like an artist or something, you relate to jiu-jitsu so much. Now you, you're like kind of beginning of the journey, but yeah. you, you can tell. The details that we see in position, and then at first doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Like on your craft, like if you show me, I see this lance here, see when I'm adjusting this number here, I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> You know, I, I have no, but then when you show me the picture yeah. and I see the shot, I was like, oh my God, that's beautiful, amazing. But the process is more important to you than for me, because I don't know. But if I start studying for photography, I want to know all those things. And then when I start combining things and putting things together, that gives me joy because yeah. I'm progressing. Yeah. I'm evolving. So jujitsu is the same thing. When you get in as a white belt, it's like arm bar. I was like, what's arm bar? You have no idea what it is. But then you start practicing until the first day that you hit the first one when you go live. And then it's I can an amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling, right? It's an and incredible then, feeling. And then what, what that gives to you. And and just like the, one of the my favorite things about jiu-jitsu to, to go on to what you've, you've just said is uh, there, there's parts of it that sound kind of scary. Like you're going to go into a gym and get beat up. But the, the honestly, the beautiful part about this is if you imagine for those that have no idea what Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is it's essentially wrestling but with submission so there's no striking involved um, you're submitting and tapping your opponents you potentially can choke them out but that's fine nothing happens nothing bad happens anyway you tap yeah. you tap so you you leave the gym you can do it you're not going to get serious injuries um, and doing it right uh, yeah. under good guidance and it's such a like I haven't done any other workout any other exercise where you can leave everything on the mat, like in a way that's like you can exactly what you said, all of your, your day, your frustrations, your everything, you just leave it right there on the mat with somebody else who knows how to like, you're not killing each other. You're, you're rolling and, and moving around with somebody who's a teammate, a partner. Um, and it's physical, but it is also this beautifully technical craft. And I think that's what I fell in love with. I'm a frameworks person. I love frameworks for everything. And when I was in your class and you're teaching just these nuances of them, like you can see when you have somebody in a Kimura grip and you would show just like, just tightening and turning the wrist a little bit and bring it in. And I was like, there's so much of this beautiful artistry to this craft. It, it kind of blends everything that I love. And so there's this meditative side, but you're also working out you're also, there's the camaraderie of like having teammates. There's all these things. And I fell in love with it so quick. I had all three of my kids at your gym as well, and yeah. we plan as soon as we can. We're we're back there. All of us are going to be, be back awesome. There. I miss the kids. I know it's been that's been the hardest thing for us. I think in 2020 was not being able to do jujitsu. Um, no, no lie. Like despite being new to the craft, that was the most difficult thing for our entire family. So I can't imagine what you guys are going think through. About, think about it, somebody that does for 30 years. Yeah, that's the very first year that. I, train jiu-jitsu like the least well and you and your wife so you're a fifth degree black belt yeah your wife is a first degree black belt or a second she's i think she's about to be first about to be first okay yeah, 18 yeah yeah she's gonna be first this year yeah so eric is a monster do you guys and for context erica is actually 
she has her own grind away from jujitsu. She's a ER nurse, right? So she's been dealing with COVID and the ramifications of that this entire year. How has that been for the family? Because you have one side, jujitsu in and of itself is a contact sport. So it's probably one of the best ways that you can transmit COVID. On the other side, your wife literally works in the ER as well. There is no respite. No, yeah. And then I have a baby at home and I have my mom with me. So extra careful. We do things properly. We follow all the protocols. We yeah. do the things that we're supposed to do. One thing that just adding to it, like people, I know, like I have my beliefs. You know, what I mean, on the sense of what is right, what was wrong with all of that's going on. Yeah. But one thing that people should consider, right? I don't like to have my face covered as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I live in society. You know, what I mean, to live in society, sometimes you gotta follow some rules. Yeah that keep not only you, but others safe, right? Mm-hmm. And people are like, well, I don't agree with that. I was like, you can disagree with me as much as you want, but I'm gonna tell you this much. It's been almost a year. That's the only thing that's protecting my wife. Yeah. With dealing with the COVID patient every single day. Every day. On the ER. Every single day she see COVID patient and then she never get it. Yeah. Because she's wearing a mask. That's, that's crazy. You so I, mean? I saw her, her I, I I don't know what it is in an itinerary chart. or a sheet that she, a chart, a chart that yeah. she posted yesterday and it was just full. Yeah, now think about it. And then people are like, ah, oh, I shouldn't wear a mask. Yes, if you're outside, if you're inside your house, if you're not not doing anything, if you're hundred percent like the persons that surround you are safe too, yeah, why not? Right? Yeah. But if you go in public, if you go meet other people, you know what I mean? It's, I think it's like, if you live in society, if you respect people, I don't think that's not gonna hurt you too much. And then that's not gonna be forever. That's what I that's what I think. Because I used to think that way too, like, man, we're gonna keep this mask. But then talking more with her, I was like, it's like, well, you like it or not. One, one, uh, one, even before COVID, when the flu season was here, I was in Gary flu because I was masking all day. Yeah. So for her, it's not a big deal. And then uh, they gives me in like a different view of it. You know what I mean? I was like, she's right. Cause in like what, 10 months, 11 months, let's say of, of this situation, right? Yeah. She never get it. That's great. We have the, we have the, the, the protocol that we do. She get home, she goes from the back, walking from the back door, take her, scro- her clothes out, put a robe, get in shower, then we can talk. That's crazy. Before that, and then that's been going. This routine been going for as long as this thing is going. You know, and that, so we're almost. That. We're gonna be a year into this soon. Yeah, and then on jujitsu, uh, on my part, I gotta be really careful. You know what I mean? Like yeah. when we have the the gym open with that distance, people. You know, everybody stays there. I was I was wearing the shield, teaching yeah. class, Zoom, um, solo drills, and all those things. You know, and then. Until the point we could group up people that trust in each other, that so they could move around yeah. with each other. But I gotta stay aside because think about it. If I get and I teach three or four classes a day, yeah. I'm gonna be one that's gonna spread this. So I'm not rolling, which yeah. is which I'm not happy with. You, you and know. Erica can roll together though. Yeah, yes. we do at home. Yeah, we do. Although the it's, garage, or sometimes sure she comes to the gym. Yeah, despite Erica is incredibly proficient at the sport but there's a massive difference in weight right so yeah. it's not for the for you it's probably not the same as rolling with but that forces me to be technical though because okay. that, that's one thing like you were talking about like injuries yeah. get hurt in jiu-jitsu people that get discouraged like yeah. the people from your industry that they want to experience jiu-jitsu as well it's one thing that i create an environment that i visualized like probably like 20 years ago or so that I want to have them place that I train. Yeah, you know I believe jiu is really beneficial for everybody, and I don't want to just have uh, the guy that want to be a world champion. I want to have everybody in there. And then it would be might be on one of my speech at the end of the class, like, "Hey, I'm watching you rolling. Yeah, when you roll with the girls, they deserve they deserve a nice roll. Yeah, a good one, a tough one if you have to. But not power." Yeah. Don't muscle. Don't, yeah. don't overdo. And then I tell them like what I do when I get into situations with them. If she puts me on armbar, what goes through my mind? If it was a guy on my side here, would yeah. I muscle out? Probably not. If it was a girl on her size, her strength would be enough to stop the technique. Probably not. Yeah. So take my arm. I'll yeah. tap. No problem. Yeah. 
I try, that's the part I try to be technical. I try not to get caught without using strength and moving, keep moving. But she puts me in bad position that there's no way out. I got to tap to, to escape. Yeah, I could just muscle out and have a tap. It's not reality, you know? So the environment. That's an interesting philosophy because it was a philosophy that I sort of picked up on in watching how you teach at the gym. But it's very different than other places. Like when I was rolling in Puerto Rico, if someone's in a bad position, they would do any and everything to get out of it. Like use whatever strength they had. Now, it's not just guys rolling with girls. It's like if you're, if you are playing, uh, in jiu-jitsu we refer to like a fight as rolling. Uh, we refer to uh, jiu-jitsu as a player. Yeah. So if you are rolling with somebody that's a guy and it's two guys, but one guy's 50 pounds lighter, like you said, sure, you can just muscle your way out of a lot of different things, but you don't learn that way. It was... When I used to teach high performance driving, it was like the person that shows up to the racetrack with a Ferrari mm -hmm. versus the person that came with a Miata. Usually the people yeah. that had the Miata, they were far better drivers, more yeah. technical, more everything. And you give them the Ferrari and they will destroy every nice car owner in the world. They could do it in their Miatas. They could kill everybody. Yep. But the person the Ferrari relies on the power of the car to make up for all their mistakes. So it was an interesting thing that, that I, I loved from your gym, but there's so much, there's so much pride in jujitsu, especially when you're at a place that I think it's toned from the top. It's how your instructors teach. It's what they expect of you. And in a lot of places, there's so much pride to that tap. And that's where people get injured, not tapping. Mm -hmm. So every time someone ego. asks, it's like, oh, are you going to get, I'm going to get hurt. No, no. E ego, ego is, it's what gets on the way and get people hurt. Yeah. The majority of the time it is. Yeah. Um, for me, like, when I start rolling with somebody, like, if it's somebody that's inferior to my technique, I'm going to move with you the way that you can move because you, you need to get better yeah. to make me better. Mm -hmm. If I just go with it, I, I tell, like, it's straight up, like, for kids or for even, like, adults that getting better, blue, purple, and you get to bump out, your mentality change a little bit because yeah. it's so deep in that you start understand better. Like, I saw you keep moving that guy 10 times. How much more you need to know about Kimura? Yeah. You know what I mean? Why don't you put Kimura, let him defend and see what's the other options are there? Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can progress and then he defends. So if you fall into a situation against another blue or purple belt that defend, you have a follow-up, you have a, a sequence to put it on. But if you keep like insisting, like finish that Kimura every hundred times that you try, you might not evolve. Yeah, you black belt on Kimura, but besides the Kimura, what else you got? Yeah. So that's the way, that's the way that I, I, I tell people, you know? But the environment itself, is it goes like that. Like we have killers at the gym, you know them. Yeah. I was like, killers against killer, we go for the kill. Yeah. If you go against somebody that work all day, has three or four kids at home, and come here to get a workout, to get sweat, to laugh, to have fun, it's your job to help the guy to acquire what he came here for. You're not going to kill him. You're yeah. going to roll with the guy. I'm not saying you're not going to take it easy on him. You're going to make him work. But there's no point treat him as equal as you on a sense of same goal. Your goal is perfect your technique to be a world champ. His goal is to lose weight, clear his mind, go home safe, go work on the next day. Yeah. And I get we got to this point. Everybody understand. You know what I mean? It's funny because the thing we do, like, I like to keep tradition, right? Like, at the beginning, it was hard because people stepping on the mat. Like, when I first came here, people used to walk into the mat, stepping, yeah. jumping class, don't even say hi to you. Not even ask, hey, okay, can I may enjoy class? People use, and then that drives me crazy because yeah. I come from tradition. I like to keep it. Yeah. And I have to teach people from the very beginning. I was like, my classes are different. Other professors don't care about my class. There's there's rules. If you pass 15 minutes late, you're not welcome. You can do the next class because yeah. you're going to disturb whatever it's going on at the time. If you're up to 15 minutes late because you come from work, you're more than welcome to join class but past that no if the class is a gi it requires a gi yeah you cannot do no gi on a gi class before back in the day it was like that was where he 
And if it's a no gi class, you gotta do a no gi class. You cannot be on your gi. Yeah, and then it was somebody else's gym. Just to finish real quick, it was somebody else's gym. I was like, I can't, I can't do that. The owner, I can't do that because then I'm gonna lose students. So like, just put on me. Just tell them that this only happens on my class. On the other classes, they can do whatever they want. But on my class, that's how it is. If they want to enjoy my class has to follow my rules. Interesting. The, the guy put a sign on the wall, 15 minutes, you know, welcome. If it's good, it's good. He wrote everything I said. It's first week, you see people coming in late, it's like, did you read the sign? 20 minutes. <laughs> Next class is in like an hour. So you, you're welcome to hang around and jump on other class. Wait, what? I was like, that's my class. You know what I mean? I have all the, I have all the reason whatever I want to do to beat him up. Like you want to jump on my class, I'm gonna beat you up. But no, I always with the respect and everything. It's like my class works this way. It's beneficial for you, for everybody that's here. It show respect. It's good for everybody. Yeah. If you want to go that way, we good. If you're not, you have the right to find another gym. I would think, at least from my perspective, I like those rules. Like, and I would think that maybe that's just a different way of thinking. But to me having a certain culture in the gym is one of the things that I love about it because when new people come in, you sort of teach them the culture. This is the way that we do things here. And it, and it kind of elevates the experience. Do, do people not think that like, are there a lot of students that are like, if you set rules, I'm not coming. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I start doing that way. Right. Uh -huh. But now I don't have any more. Like you, 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 I don't know if you know this yet, but there's new students. Yeah. If I'm teaching class and they jump in the class, one of the higher belts or somebody's like, hey, can do this. You yeah. gotta wait. You gotta ask professor to be in class. Yeah. And you gotta shake hands with everybody here, the higher belt in you. Yeah. They know because that's the way it is. That's one day a, you're gonna, one day you're gonna be it. a higher belt. But the people tell, I don't have to tell anymore. Yeah. That means we sat, we're good because the students understand and they like it. Yeah. The problem that I had here at the beginning, we right here, we're, used to be right here on Irvine, right? Uh -huh. And then think about it. The majority of the students that we had, young kids from UCI, from, from college and everything. Those kids leave home early. I don't know, maybe not too many rules to follow or anything. Free and a word, like, you know, I live on my own now. I have my own apartment. I'm in school. I'm in college. Yeah. Can do whatever I want. And then we know life is not like that. You cannot do whatever you want. Yeah, you can, but you pay prices. Yeah. And then the beginner was like, all the young guys like, wait, what? How come I cannot do class? Like, no, you cannot. You cannot have a problem with that. <laughs> you know, so, but that's the young kids. The older people, they like the rules. I see. They love the rules. You know, they love the, the uniform rules. Like, it's one color. I don't like mismatch. Yeah. Blue, blue top, white, you know. You know how it is. Well, in the photos, it looks fantastic. Everybody has the same, like, in all the media and everything. It looks organized and, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it, like, maybe you're you right. Know, it's everything, everything that's good, successful, there is a certain level of organization. Yeah. And and, uh, and rules. Yeah. And struct, right? And then things that go all over the place, the place usually is like, doesn't have a, a a good finish, a good end, or, or, or last long. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like the tradition. I like the uniform. I like to keep things clean. I like those things. Yeah. I think this doesn't make your jiu-jitsu worse or better. It doesn't make, because uh, people, it's all about the freedom, right? Yeah. I want to come here, because I know schools that do that, like, you can come with, whatever gi you want to come, you can jump in class anytime you want to jump in class. They charge top dollar, but they do whatever they want to do. I guess there's four mats for everybody, right? If you, if, you, if you are one of those that doesn't fit, you have the right to choose other schools. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, an, interesting, um, it's an interesting concept because it, it, I feel like you kind of, the way that you've set up the school, you're, you're going to attract like-minded individuals. You know, if you set up a school that's very free form in every possible way, then you're probably going to attract a lot of people that are very free form in, in every possible way, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I, I almost feel like I want to say in most areas of life, like some, some amount of flexibility, obviously 2020 is required everybody to be flexible, mm -hmm. but 
routine and ritual is kind of part of success in anything that you do. Yeah. So I don't, it doesn't make sense to me that you could. But you know one thing that I, that's interesting for me? I keep the formality really sharp. Yeah. Like the discipline, the routine, the rules and everything. But when it comes down to jujitsu to roll, I don't tell anybody like, unless it's a huge mistake, so you're doing something that's going to cost you later. Yeah. So like, I think you should pass the guard more this way. Yeah. But if you're doing whatever you're doing, that you're rolling, you're moving like the way that nobody ever moved before. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> Keep doing. I'm watching. That's good for you. Keep doing. So I let you free. I let you do yeah. whatever you want to do when you inside the, the rules that we, we, we set. Yeah. I'm not going to tell like, going to be just like this. You got to do exactly the way I do. No, because we're individuals, right? So you can do whatever you want. As long as there is a, you know, I know like you're doing something, you're rolling wrong. Like if you roll in that direction again, you're going to hurt your knee or you're going to get caught on this and that. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. But if you're doing something like, man, that works. I keep doing well, this environment that you've set up is, um, it's part of the reason why I've, I loved being there for when I, when I roll with the higher belts first, every lesson that you said was explained to me by the higher belts, um, including the shaking of hands, including like, and you just observe like what people do when they, you know, come into class and it doesn't take more than a few times before you learn those lessons. Um, but when I rolled with the higher belts, these people can destroy me just like red. That, that was the most insane thing to me. He rolled with me once, and I was like, I don't even know what we're doing, dude. Like, why are you rolling with me? But it was in a nogi class, and he's like, okay, just use some of your dad's strength. I'm like, I don't want to use my dad's strength, and if, even if I did, it wouldn't matter. It would just be worse for me. But then he moved around me in a way, and Red's like 140? One, yeah. I'm like 180 on a when I'm doing good, not COVID. I'm, I'm like 200 right now, okay? so Everybody's a little heavy. <laughs> we're a little heavy right now. But he just moved around and had me submitted within like five seconds. And I was like, I don't get it. And he's like, you got a lot, <laughs> like a long ways to go. <laughs> but he was so respectful in the process. And it was like, I could roll with anybody and feel safe. And I think that was one of the big things is like, I, I'm not in there to, you know, compete. I'm in there for meditation, for physical fitness, for, I, I do want to be a black belt one day, but I'm not in a rush. Um, I'm in there for all those reasons and to be there and to be in that place. I, I attribute that environment to the leader and, and that yeah. is you. So that's a significant accomplishment. Yeah. Thank you. Jiu Jitsu is like that. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be made to hurt. Cause if you think about it, the backbone of Jiu Jitsu, if I can say it that way, it's self defense. Yeah. Right. I can control you and I'll give you a chance to, give up or if you want to go try yourself out to escape a little more you might pop your elbow a little bit but that's <laughs> not my fault yeah right the, but that doesn't happen with uh with a new student or new people yeah right but you just like think about it i think you have multiple days that i saw you working like day off the other because usually like people take one day off in between mm -hmm. and then you can go on monday and do 100 percent. you can go on tuesday do 100 percent you can go Wednesday, do 100%. You're fine. Yeah, body sore, but not injuries. Mm -hmm. And then if you get a strike, any strike uh, art or modality, you sparring on a Monday, No, you have to take the entire 100%. Yeah. If you spar 100% Monday, you got to take the rest of the- The week off. The week off. You can drill, you can, you can hit the bags or something like that. So that's the thing that I think set jujitsu a little apart. Because you can go 100%. Yeah, respecting the rules, not going crazy. You got caught on something. You tap somebody. You got caught somebody. Don't hurt them. Let them move. Let them escape. You know, if you know you had it, you had it. Don't don't have to break anything. Yeah. Because next day you're gonna be dead. The guy's gonna be dead too. You both are growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So jujitsu has this part that you can go 100 percent every day. Get a physical, mental, and everything gets stronger. Yeah. I think. The kids have. Um have absolutely loved it and and they do have those days like you described you know ethan and ellie and, and james there'll be days where they'll be like really pumped and then there'll be days where i know they got they got worked but like that to me is that process of uh, 
I don't, I don't know of any other necessarily any other sport or activity that symbolizes kind of your typical life journey in such an almost identical manner. Like you, from the point of walking in to let's warm up to let's get beat over and over and over and repeat a movement over and over and over until it becomes muscle memory and you successfully do that one thing and then you move on to the next one. And that process, as soon as I saw it, I was like, my kids have to learn this from the, the time that they're young. Not, not They can do whatever they want professionally, but yeah. the lessons. It's going to help you through life tremendously. Yeah. It does. I have a lot of... I have a lot of uh, people that that's what keeps me going. I think like from back home in Brazil, I was talking about this yesterday. At one point I had, it was like, how do we get so many kids? Like sometimes there's gyms, there's a lot of tons of kids in the other gyms that now someone's like, sometimes it's the location that you are. And sometimes yeah. you get that, you get that one kid that everybody follows. Mm -hmm. So at one point I had this kid at back home that he was a, uh, there was a private school, yeah. and he was a, a, the school owner's son, and then he goes to school. But he was a nice kid. Everybody loves him, besides be the son of the, the owner. Everybody loves him. And he he decided to do jiu-jitsu, so everybody followed him. So one year, like I think we won like, all the kids in juvenile divisions. That's crazy. Everybody uh, competed because they're there. They're all together in the same environment, right? Yeah. So out of those kids, there's doctors, there's kids that's writing books and put my name in there, thanks to you. I have one guy that I just reconnected with him. He's a PhD in economics. It's like he, and then we just reconnect because I went away and then he's like, you're not gonna believe. On my seminars, you are always there. So that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I said what I start, what you did to me, how my life has changed. And it's just a few people that, you know, well, think about how many people jujitsu can, can help, you know, yeah. keep you stable, mental, physically. I think it's, when we say jujitsu lifestyle, it's more about that because people think it's a cliche when you say jujitsu lifestyle. And you see, you can see clearly, like, especially now there is Instagram that you can see people what they're doing in life. When we say jujitsu lifestyle, it's one you're gonna grab something to eat and you think is that gonna affect my training yeah. tomorrow yeah if you start thinking that way you want to wait to you want the process to <laughs> to become a jiu-jitsu addicted and then live that style because like that's the, the the beautiful part because it's not that you're like so crazy so paranoid about your jiu-jitsu it's because you know if you take too much of that food or that drink or whatever it is Next day, you're not going to be you. You're going to be somebody else. Because you is the person that you see every day working out, training, and doing everything at one form. Like, as a normal pace or whatever it is. I don't know if it makes sense what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. But then you feel like, man, I ate too much. That food didn't do me well. I should not repeat that. You know, I might look to that food like once a month or something like that. So that's the changing. Well, that that described kind of my mental process when COVID hit because before COVID, you know, I, I used to play other sports and things like that. But when I got into jujitsu, every decision I made away from jujitsu was for jujitsu. So it was what I ate, how I worked out, you know, I wanted to, Oh man, my knee felt tweaky a little bit. I need to do a little more, you know, strengthening around the muscles. Um, I'm a little bit over the weight that I want to be. I need to eat a little bit more clean. Everything that I was doing was that. And it was also my mental health and everything. So when you when when we took that away in, you know, or some people were able to kind of continue going. I I had my my um, partner was pregnant. Yen was pregnant with three kids at home. So we were like, we don't know what this is. So safety reasons, like, let's just, you know, not. But when that was taken away, I had to like I had three months where just my mental health was deteriorating and i could feel it every single day i can't imagine what you and erica felt during that time the, the best the best thing that happened in 2020 was the born of four girl yeah because Mila that being born being born yeah because that that uh changed the routine yeah you know it was something new yeah so it took me away a little bit but even that seems like 
every time I look at the mirror, there was an inch larger. <laughs> I was like, I never gained so much in my life like that. And why, why, you know, and I was working in the garage. Yeah. You know, I was working out, run here and there, not too disciplined because it, it's unknown. Like, you know, I mean, it's easy, like, like I'll get a competition, for example, or a fight, or MMA fight. You, you get ready to the fight, you fight, and then independent of the result, you know, you're going to have another fight. So yeah. you get into the process again and training and everything. This is something I've heard of before. It's not like, okay, it's three months at home, then we start over. Yeah. It wasn't like that. Something that you don't know exactly when it start and when it's going to end. Yeah. COVID is just this mystery. Yeah. So then you like, man, where my mind grows now? Yeah. But what I do? What, what I, because you got to refocus, right? Like, okay, I can't, I like to think that way. Yeah. My focus is main on um, things that I can't control. What I cannot control, I can't control you. So, yeah. and then there was, I couldn't refocus. So the best thing was like having a meal there. It was Neil, our first babe. So I was learning a lot, a lot about it. You were starting, but at the same time, it was, maybe that was good that the gym was closed because the sleep, you know how it is. Yeah. You have four, so <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> so you know how it is. But that's what that saved me a little bit. But even though it was, like, it was hard, yeah. you, it was hard on, on mentally, you know, because it's something that is not, it's different. Like it was good for you. It's good for you. Jiu-Jitsu is good for you. For sure. But it's a hub. For me, it's a hobby. Yes. Yeah. For me, it's my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's. It's, it's, it's different when heart. you say, that's what I mean is for me, you take it away and I'm struggling. I can't yeah. imagine on your side where this is everything. This is yeah. your career, your profession, your, your, it's your interest, your passion. It's all those things. Yeah. The only, the only saving, like I, I remember talking to Yen and I said, um, the only thing right now that I think would be a saving factor for Jiva and Erica is the fact that they can both roll together. Like they yeah. can, they both understand what it is they're missing and they can both participate with each other. That help a lot, tremendously. And I can say it helps more her than myself. Yeah. Because I can't, I can't work out. I can't refocus. I can't. Like I, I read a lot of books. Yeah. You know what I mean? I read a lot, and it helps me in a certain way. You know, stretching, healing some injuries. But Erica has this thing that she has to work out. Yeah, she she's she, a monster. She's a, she she's motivate me. Yeah, she works. She her shift starts at seven. Mm -hmm. She wakes up at five to work out before I go to work, and her work is on the ER, standing all day. Sometimes she look at her clocks like, "Ooh, I walked seven miles today. Ooh, I walked six crazy. miles just inside the ER." Yeah, but she wakes up to work out. When I see her getting up, I like, where are you going? Work out in the garage. And it's insane. Like, so she needs. So when we, and then train is it's part of her life too, like for a decade already. Yeah. Or more than that. And when she didn't have jujitsu, she was like stressing a lot. I was like, okay, put the gi on. Let's go train. Yeah. You know? And then I help her train, but now we have this routine. And then it, it, she, she motivates me so much that I was thinking, because the gym is still super slow. And I was thinking, like, where's my challenge? Every year we pick a challenge together. I was like, this year I'm going to pick a challenge just for myself. And then my challenge is being going right now. It's wake up five and run 5K. That's a good challenge. Uh, I'm on How's a, that going? I'm on the 10th day. <laughs> That's awesome. And it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> but I won't quit. It got to be at least 21 days. Yeah. You know, to change the habit. And uh, it, it's going, but... It's funny because like we pretty much wake up at the same time in the morning, and just because I'm waking up, she's looking at me and laughing. So that mean, I think she's liking it. It helps her some, some way to see like I'm taking care of myself besides not having the jujitsu the whole time. Yeah, it's something cool. But that's the 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 physical part. I think like she got hit harder than I did. Yeah, you know because my whole life is activity. Her too, because she was a gymnastist. She ran track. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, she she was really good. Yeah. As I heard, the parents talking to everybody. Yeah. When she had an accident, she fell and broke her tailbone. Oh, okay. And then she couldn't do. Oh man. Those high impact anymore. Yeah. Then she ran track, and she was really good. And then she, 
You know, it's a fun thing. The first class that Erica did with me, it was amazing. We were in this is before you guys were no, yeah, nothing. But she was so strong and flexible and moving. I look her. She la she look at me and laugh. I was like, <laughs> if you stick with jujitsu, because at the time she was going to college and she was finished college and then uh, working. That's all she was doing. And then training, kickboxing at the big gym training kickboxing and she decided to try jiu-jitsu and i told her like if you stick with jiu-jitsu you're gonna be a world champion that's crazy and she's like ha 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 she laughed at me like hmm. you're just saying that so i can't stick around here <laughs> you're just saying that because you want to date me and no <laughs> no we didn't even like have anything like it wasn't even like that and then like three years pass she hangs on a pod is like what i told you three years ago i was like oh yeah you said that i was like yeah she when she won her first like world championship. That's crazy. I was like, what I told you? She's like, yeah. I was like, you have what it takes. You just got to put your mind into it. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, and so I I actually um, have been working on a book about relationships. the The whole premise of this podcast is stupid simple. So um, I like taking complex things and making them easy to understand. I've spent. 10 years doing this in photography and lighting and creativity and that kind of stuff. Before that, it was languages. Now, I'm like, you know what? I want to do something different, and it's relationships. And one of the things that I talk about is um, having a similar, like basically having aligned core values um, as well as interests, like, like common areas of interest um, are so critical, namely core values. But most of us don't understand what a core value actually is. Most of us think a core value is like, going to church it's not a core value like what you the reason you go to church is the actual core value it's the it's, yeah. it's what drives the motivation so jujitsu has this interesting way of actually aligning values over time and what i've noticed is people enter it usually with this kind of there's a certain amount of especially if you're an athlete there's a certain amount of pride that you have entering the sport that gets stripped away and then you kind of rebuild yourself from the ground up, learning these different principles and techniques. And then you start looking at other areas of life in this kind of similar manner. So the fact that you guys shared this, I don't know if you ever thought about this, but on my mind was like, what if Erica wasn't a black belt and an athlete and all these things? What would happen in that relationship between them? Because you would lose your vocabulary, you would you lose your activities, you would lose the ability to be able to understand each other across the board. It's a good point, a good description that you did about uh, how the people get to the gym. And isn't it interesting? Like yeah. the it slowly, like you can see their values sort of as they belt up, they get more humble. <laughs> good way to put. But uh, it, it was a very, because other things don't do that. You know, like you can go to church for 20 years and the people around you can have completely different core values than you. They, yeah. they might belong to the same religion, but everyone's there for a different reason. One person's there because their, their spouse wants them to be there. One person's there because they want to network and make social connections. One person actually wants to be spiritual. Another person just wants to seek financial gain by, hey, this person's in business and they can help me out. And they also go to this, you know, there's, all these different reasons, but eventually, you might show up to a jujitsu gym with a certain mindset, but eventually it all conforms and it meets at this place. Yeah, I think like, answer what you ask about, like, it would be hard. Like professionally, like if you, we had like we, how do I say that? We made a lot of um, people get together at the gym. Yeah. We had just had the, I think the third wedding. The third wedding of 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 yeah, students that met who at married the, yeah okay. that met at the gym <laughs> that's awesome it's really interesting huh so we got yeah we got a lot so I think more than three but on my kids like I'm professional right yeah I think about it uh, 2019 I think I probably had like a handful of free weekends mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I was. Because you're usually out coach, coaching on coaching, weekends. Tournaments, yeah. coaching, traveling. And now that I'm back in like coaching fights again, UFC, MMA, yeah. I travel a little longer. It's like Friday to Sunday or Thursday to the whole weekend. Yeah. 
you feel if you don't have somebody that knows what you're doing the passion that you have for yeah what the passion is like i'm gonna have a lot of challenges oh for sure you know what i mean like because like it's okay because you have a girlfriend or wife or something it's like yeah i support you on your journey yeah you know what i mean but if you don't understand your journey like the what that thing means to you how much value you, you put on, on on the stuff you do how much pride you have for the things that you do if they don't understand that they're like no what about me yeah what about me what about all those weekends out? what about me yeah you know it would be really hard and then for that like i give eric a lot of credit because she, she does she loves jiu-jitsu she compete a lot too but sometimes like man i got this other tournament again that means it's another weekend and we're not together mm -hmm. and then she's pretty understandable you know she's like i know what you got to do go do what you got to do yeah you know what i mean so she's really understanding like now that i had a couple fights on the end of the year she's like just tell me when you have to go so i can switch my schedule at work yeah but if you think about like somebody that is not part of it not even trained jujitsu they don't understand any of it mm -hmm. if it's just like a hub like i said you go for an hour like you go into a any lifting gym and mm -hmm. stuff like that that's understandable oh you have a, a competition on the weekend hey i'm gonna compete this weekend you can want to come with me yeah i want to watch it they would go when you tell like man the majority of my weekends is going to be inside of a gymnasium yeah and then somebody asked me like uh one there's like they asked me like oh, world championship world championship usually go from wednesday all the way to sunday mm -hmm. i'm there every day probably like from 9 a.m all the way to the end five six and somebody asked me somebody that's from jiu-jitsu he asked me do you stop to think how many weekends you spend inside of a gymnasium on your life mm -hmm. i can never and i don't want to do this <laughs> i was like i don't want to do this because there's a lot of times so it will affect the relationship if it is not somebody that fully understand i think yeah you know? absolutely but i and it's interesting how in a in a relationship where the values do align when those perspectives are understood and and then the entire reason that you're in love with each other the entire reason that you you it is those identities that you've already built it is who this person is and so if you were to and that's what's most interesting about relationships if is you know sometimes we go into these things and we're like i want to change this person but if you change that person they're no longer the person that you fell in love with so as much as like it's time away, it also makes you who you are, um, which is that person that, you know, she's in love with and she is the person that you're in love with. But anyway, that, that's an interesting side note that I was thinking. I was like, I wonder, I wonder if Jiva thinks about that. But I wanted to ask because I, I, I need to hear this from somebody that's that's well at the top of the entire sport uh, of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But I'm so curious for those that don't, know the sport um this used to be japanese jujitsu it was jujitsu was brought over correct to yeah the story says that born in india oh india okay yeah they migrated to japan okay and from japan went to brazil and then i would say that was like a little bit different develop in brazil mm -hmm. by the grace family yeah so helio and carlos Helio learned it from what was the, was brought, uh, the Mitsumaeda. Mitsumaeda. So he came over basically. Carlos. Carlos. Uh, Carlos. This is his brother, older brother. He, uh, Helio was the smallest one. Okay. And they, they taught the Gracie family and then they essentially adapted it. And I've been so curious what are some of the primary differences between the original Jiu Jitsu versus Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? It's, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, what the story says that the old jiu-jitsu jiu jiu-jitsu that were prior to to the brazilian jiu-jitsu the grace jiu-jitsu it was jiu-jitsu that was like most like towards a self-defense mm -hmm. more like uh, um it still is yeah. grace family still did the same thing that throws the judo mm -hmm. and everything it was more like there was no gear towards sport too much i see you know what i mean there was no gear towards the sport it was like a art to protect defend yourself with efficiency mm -hmm. and then 
uh, it usually was like same size kind of thing or small and bit bigger guy. Mm -hmm. But Helio Grace, which was the smaller, that happens that he teach a class one day by accident to make sure because his brother we have time because I, I like his, <laughs> no because his brother wasn't there yeah short on a short on the history because oh short on history okay because i don't have uh the tremendous of the how much details you know yeah and then he taught a class but he was a little guy so he started adapting things for his size interesting perfecting the leverage yeah and everything to make more efficient independent of who you who you go against you know and then he shaped that way and then um, I would say 80s, 90s. Jiu-Jitsu was more like a private session. It was geared towards like private classes, private session. It wasn't like like we have now the group yeah. of class. So all the format of the Jiu-Jitsu that was taught, there was like a certain number of technique. Then you go through that program. You know what I mean? Like yeah. day one, you learn this. Day two, you come to learn this. You review day one and you get day three and then i think it was like maybe 30 something classes and it was like that because there's not many people practicing you know what i mean and it's like more like towards rich people yeah and then it was developed that way for private lessons only i see group of private lessons and then when it start the uh more people get added into jiu-jitsu they start uh spread the jiu-jitsu they start to trying to reveal the system that they were doing and then more techniques start being added, like through the evolution of the sport. Yeah. And then start getting more into what I say that is because when I start training jujitsu, there's no much the techniques that we see nowadays passing and standing. Yeah. Not too many. You know what I mean? Leg locks. It was like, yeah, I was, no, there was like locks. But it was more like people passing on their knees. Okay. Either you go to for the tick down and somebody fall on the top on the bottom. And then people passing on their knees. The majority of the technique was key mover, arm bar, triangle. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was simple chokes, of course, chokes. Mm -hmm. It was basic thing. But now you see the variety that we have with the technique with yeah. the evolution. So the structure of the classes start changing. You know what I mean? Like on yeah. a sense of how do I'm going to teach? Because it's easy. One on one. You, you one on one, it's easy. You come today, you learn this. Yeah. You come tomorrow, you're going to learn something new. We review what you learned today. Third day, we review day two. And then it goes that way. But when you start having a group of like 30, 50 people in class, not even that, like 20 people in class, that you don't have the same people coming in every day. How are you going to restructure that to have classes, to have a program that would fit that way? Mm -hmm. That's why that's a lot of gems that are still lost with that. No, yeah. I don't say lost, but they, there's gyms that you go like, okay, today we're going to see this. And you come tomorrow like, uh, for yeah, example, you, you get gyms that it's like, okay, today we're going to see this choke or this guillotine or whatever. And the next day you come in, you think you're going to have a follow-up on that. And it's like, okay, we're going to work foot locks today. Yeah. There's gyms nowadays that's still like that. That's very common, to be honest. I, I feel like it's very common. Maybe maybe outside of Orange County. But if, uh, Anthony, can you pull up the One Jiu Jitsu Instagram? One of the things that I found so helpful is your guys' posts will actually conform and kind of follow the things that are being done in class. And then what you're doing in class is evolving from week to week. So it's last week we did yeah. this, next week we're going to do this. And there's a system that... Yeah. But I've been to three gyms outside of California. Uh, none of them did that. Yeah, because I think some people, they just think it goes their way. That that's and then not, not only that, sometimes that's how they learn. Yeah, because a lot of people they reproduce what they uh, that's true what they saw in the past sure. or how they learned from that the instructor. You know what I mean? Then, yeah. then for me, I always like I'm always like it. One day is not enough to learn and absorb a technique. You know what I mean? Like you're not gonna, I'm not gonna. Like if you go on the first class, what's or first class? That's the intro class. The first intro class it is is a close guard. You learn yeah. a choke. You learn a kimura. You learn how to reverse the position, which is the sweep, and you learn a couple submissions from the top. Yeah, one day is not enough for that. Behind all of the things that you to that I taught you, the first day, so just to, you understand jujitsu a little bit. There's a lot of concepts. Yeah, you're not gonna learn in one day. For sure, not not in one year. Not yeah. So we need like. Because then I gotta I gotta sit down with you and talk about the mount. Yeah. About the guard, how you protect yourself in the guard, how can you attack the opponent? 
And then it was important for me to create a system. Like, you, like for the regular class, you have two weeks of uh, content, yeah. uh, 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 a component, like two weeks off guard. We're going to see a specific guard for two weeks. And then the next two weeks is going to see back or submissions or whatever we have on a schedule that's yearly. My mm -hmm. schedule is yearly, right? So it's, div it's divided that way. You know what I mean? And, but for the beginners, they got to go through 20 intro classes that we have. Mm -hmm. And then tw it's 20 intro classes, but you don't learn 20 intro classes on 20 days. Yeah, yeah. It takes a while to absorb, to learn properly, to perfect properly in order to move on to the next one. And then I think what changed from the Japanese Jiu Jitsu to the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was the leverage the technique, the difference, the leverage was a big thing mm -hmm. on my on my uh, on my opinion. What what specifically in terms of leverage? Because it feels like because it was more like physical in a sense of muscle uh -huh. controlling. How think about it? If you get like you say you roll it red, right? Mm -hmm. You like you say like one eighty on a good days, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and red is one forty. On a normal situation that none of you knew jiu-jitsu how would he get out of you from the bottom using his strength if that's the only thing he could rely on it and you're using your strength just push push and kick maybe but you would get tired mm -hmm. if you don't create a method or or a way that you could frame frame, frame. create a leverage mm -hmm. change angle make you lose balance yep. create an opportunity timing all those things, I think that what's make the difference, right? Because that's what everybody say, Jiu Jitsu, the sport that the smaller, yes, can beat the, the bigger guy. If he, uh, if you work properly, right? If he rely on his technique, learn to apply the technique. And then that's what goes with my saying class. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys, no matter how strong you are, no matter how strong you are, you're gonna find somebody stronger than you. Yeah. But more technical than you, it's up to you. Because you can perfect your technique daily basis. That was, I think, the eye-opening moment in, I mean, I would I would think everybody would think this, but Hoyce entering, this is Helio's son, wasn't it? Yeah, Hoyce, yeah. Hoyce enters the UFC, and this is a period of the UFC where there's not like the rules and regulation there is now, right? So um, I remember in the early fights, Hoyce was wearing his gi in some of the fights, mm -hmm. and like the other person was no gi or just like in their underwear, like typical fight i don't know what wrestling. you call it spandex wrestling yeah. um but you see hoist going against people that are like twice his size 50 pounds 100 pounds heavier and he wins and it was like i don't know for for the the person i feel like for the average person that looks at martial arts you hope and you want to see technique win over muscle over it, it's the david versus goliath scenario yeah. but hoist was this first massive stage this can actually work and then it seemed to explode from there and th and your lineage comes directly from the gracies does it not yeah i i uh i started jiu-jitsu with the, there's two kind of two lineage in brazil okay they say one is a uh, through gracie and the other one is through master oswaldo father okay when i start training jiu-jitsu in the army my first professor is from oswaldo father lineage okay but then he we work in the army and then he got transferred and i started training at lot of school with the master moises which is the lineage come from from the gracie i see so i had the chance to learn from both sides so were they teaching this in the military at the time um uh, no the, what happened is like you go to the military you spend the most major of the time on the military right yeah so i it was hard for me to go home to because sometimes you you finish the mission till late uh, catch a bus get a train and stuff like that and sometimes like, i'm just gonna sleep here i gotta be up at 5 a.m anyways and then this guy got transferred to my my base uh Ahons Maya, mm -hmm. my professor my first professor and he was right black belt okay. and then he 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 was from rio which is compared to sao paulo and rio is like from california to las vegas okay so you far away so he couldn't go home anyway so he has to leave at the army and then go home on the weekends and then he trying to find something to fill his time and then he started teaching jiu-jitsu he started on the base oh, so cool a little bit and then he opened like on a ymca he yeah. opened a class on ymca but i i had enough lucky to uh 
at the the day that we have to do a physical activities, we have a mat at the base, and it's like, no, you're not gonna play so soccer. Was our thing, you no, know, play soccer every day in my life. I grew up like the place that I grew up in the slum. Yeah. There was a soccer field around right front of it, so I played soccer every day my entire life. And then it was a it was a, that's you see passion right there because I was yeah. I was like passionate for football for soccer, and then when I started doing jujitsu. I left the soccer. I was like, I don't want to play soccer. I want to do this. Yeah. And then he teaches me every day one on one because he want to practice too. There was nobody because like there was a lot of people doing, especially from the army, but yeah. not not many people as interested as I was. I see. You know, I fall in love. I like it. And then yeah. every time he's like, Hey, you want to train? He's like, Yes, yeah, sir. Right yeah. now. And then it, he was a sergeant already, and I was graduating still. I was a soldier. I become like a special soldier, and I was like, I was in. I was on a school for sergeant when I started uh, chatting with him and then learned jujitsu. Then I got promoted to sergeant, and then it was easier to adjust the schedule to practice, and it was it was amazing. I tell him today, you changed my life. Yeah, it's like I have everything I have because of jujitsu. If you haven't have introduced jujitsu for me, I wouldn't be here what I am today. Yeah, I tell him every time. Literally thirty years from that point, and uh, and you actually went down the road too of of. MMA, right? Didn't you fight? Yeah, I fought professionally in MMA. Yeah, I remember watching some of your fights actually, uh, and I was I was like, it's pretty cool. Huh? It was <laughs> rad, first of all, yeah, <laughs> like intense. It's super intense, and I and I almost feel like um, one of the questions that I I hear a lot, especially again coming from this like kind of creative side, is, well, why would you watch such a violent sport? <laughs> now I have my answer to that, but what is your answer to it? watching or doing both there's a lot of people that look at this and they just think that like oh we're civilized now why would two people fight each other mm. I, to tell you that i gotta tell a little bit of the story of my life i want to hear it um i i'm a, i was the youngest because now i have a, a young sister mm -hmm. but i was the youngest of a family of four so my dad left left my mom when i was two and then we had no other option to move to the slum. Mm -hmm. And then we, I live on the slum for for a long time. And uh, I always keep mm, thinking on a way out mm -hmm. to make my life better or my family life better. And uh, I always like to do things neat, perfect. I see a lot of bad things happen on the slum. My mom was at work and then she never had a time to keep like educate me formally like with everything that she should because she was busy yeah you're on your own yeah i don't blame her so i learned a lot of things on the go mm -hmm. i never used drugs i never took anything that wasn't my own for my family mm -hmm. but i always think like it, and then it's a desired advantage on a sense of you always being judged even if you don't want it even if you don't belong to be judged then you are so you have to be extra careful and do things the most perfect that you can mm -hmm. in order to succeed or get out of it. And I always try to do things right and perfect. And my mom was always there. Don't do this. This is wrong. And she was always like lecturing in us the way, the best way that she could. Here yeah. and there you see people dying on the street. She calls us like, see that guy? I don't know what he was doing because I'm working. You probably know what he was doing. If you don't want to end up like that, don't do what he was doing. That's what That's her crazy. education. Yeah. And then I was trying to do things better. My first way out was the military because I couldn't, I was 17 mm -hmm. and I didn't, I want to be a soccer player first and try a couple of teams, but too many good, good kids playing soccer in Brazil. It's yeah. like uh, NFL football here, NFL <laughs> or, 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 or basketball here. There's too yeah. many good kids for not so many spots. For sure. And then I tried a couple of times and couldn't get it. And in Brazil, uh, military is mandatory. Yeah. You got to enlist. But they don't take everybody. There's a certain number. And I volunteer. I was like, that's my way out. And I volunteered for the military. And I was like, I think I can make a career here. And I was planning on making a career. That's why I became a sergeant. But when I became a sergeant, I thought I was going to have a four more year on my contract. Mm -hmm. Or five more year on my contract getting a good pay I was like that's enough time to to go to college yeah to do college and then pay my college pay my tuition and everything and then get a profession but then as soon as I got promoted the constitution changed and then they reduced the time 
I only have two more years ahead of me. And I was like, that's not enough. I don't have money to do. Yeah. And you can't re-up? No. I have to go through another school on the military, which I tried, but I didn't, didn't uh, qualify. I see. And I was like, there's enough time. But luckily, I'll start doing jiu-jitsu for wow. fun, for yeah. fun. Never thought about that was going to be what I am to do and do the things that I did. But without that mindset, perfect things. Yeah. Do things the best way you can. I was the number two on my special soldier course. I was the number three on my sergeant course out of 40, I think. So I was trying to to do the things the best way that yeah. I could do. And then I started doing jiu-jitsu, get out of the army, and then I find a job with my uncle. And then I started uh, working on jiu-jitsu. But then I got to a point that I have to pick a side to go. Yeah. Either jiu-jitsu or we have a... a uh, refrigeration we work with like acs and refrigerators and stuff like that and i was like man i'm gonna do this for the rest of my life i'm gonna do jiu-jitsu but i like jiu-jitsu but i was kind of like going back and forth winning some losing some tournaments and you're 20 something at this point right? at the 20? time i was 25 i think 25 as i left the arm at 23 yeah and i was juggling right there and then the I was thinking about like stopping jujitsu because I was teaching because mm -hmm. my professor got transferred and he left the, the, the people the, the students with me. I was a purple belt at the time, and then I was teaching class, training, competing, and then working. And then my uncle was like, "Hey, we gotta work harder, or what are we gonna do with this?" And yeah. then I was like, nah, "I have to do something. It's about time. I'm on the age." And then I was like, "You know, I, I gotta try jujitsu for real." For real, I gotta give myself a fair shot. I'm gonna try for real. I'm gonna do a diet. I'm gonna train properly and see what I get. If I don't get anything out of this, then that's not for me. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, we start. Me and my uncle, we start from zero, and then we build a warehouse. We didn't have a car, or anything, so we bought a car. We bought all the equipment and made everything. And then the the, the the this shop. is in the AC business, the building. Yeah, yeah. Building and the AC. shop was looking beautiful. But me and my uncle was arguing a lot because yeah. he wanted me there more time. Yeah. I put the time that I couldn't there, did everything, and never let him down. But he wanted me there longer. I was like, I can't do longer because yeah. since the very beginning, I told you, Jiu Jitsu is really important for me. You kind of had this fork. You were kind of one way or the other yeah, way and yeah. splitting time. And then at one point, I was like, I told him, like, you know what? Here's the thing it's all yours. I'm just going to walk away. Keep everything. Take care of your family. He had two kids. It's like, take care of your family. I'm single. I'm going to figure out my life. You keep everything. I don't want anything. Wow. That's all yours. And then I started training jiu-jitsu, doing things properly, periodization training, and I got better jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But besides doing that, I also read reading books, like, like technical books, like periodization. Yeah. Like, because I couldn't afford college. And I was like, paying everything, uh, training, like making not much money, but hustling. But I find one good guy that helps me with the periodization training and get better. And then I start training jiu-jitsu and the results start. When I put 100% of my time on jiu-jitsu, it started happening. Mm -hmm. I started winning like a lot of tournaments, good ones. And then like, I find the joy again. I was like, that's for me. I'm yeah. never gonna change my life again. Jiu-jitsu is gonna be what I wanna do for life. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna make money with yeah but that's what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life and i started competing and compete competition was my life until 1996 was my first pen in mm -hmm. when i came here lost two mats lost the division lost the open division oh man got devastated and went home work harder 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 and then came in again and then won pen ams and then i started getting better and then competition was on my my thing yeah and then get to a point that i started getting older was still competing and I applied to college and then I get to college and it was like I, I passed on the test and I went to talk to the dean I was like hey here's the thing I know you guys jiu-jitsu is big in Brazil I was like I know you guys have a team here but your team is not doing so good yeah I can't join your team I can't teach but I don't got no money to pay college yeah can we do that trade it's like no <sighs> you gotta pay college I was like, fine, and I'll go home. And then I went home. And then the next year, when they opened the, the, the registration again for college, they called me at home. Are you still interested in do college? 
It's like, wow. what can you do for me? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can give you 80% of scholarship. I was like, I'll take it. Yeah. So you got to teach at the college and then compete for the college. And then our, our team was bad. But then I kind of like recruit my professor and then Fabio. I never met Fabio, but I talked Fabio like he was my kid. He's my kid. Fabio Negal. He's one of the guys that had that. I started recruiting for the college and we made this good team that never lost. We started beating everybody. But besides being in college, it's, I love it. I love it because I started reading books before. Yeah. I love that I did PE kinesiology uh -huh. and I love the science. I love the physiology. I love everything. And then my papers were good papers. The teachers didn't want to let me leave college because I always liked to do things right. That yeah. The education that I get on slum to be perfect, try to make things good, I always put me on that spot that I got to be do things like extra careful you know to do things good and then when i passed through uh uh when i was finishing college i had the first opportunity to fight mma this is when you're about 30 30 30 30 okay. 30 no 33 because i got i got into college i was 29 yeah i was finished college at 33 it's interesting how the things match a week before the end of college when i have to release one mo a month before that i have to to give my last paper somebody like hey there's a there's a fight there's yeah, i was getting enrolled for jiu-jitsu competition right because yeah. i was master and but i was still competing in adults like hey there's a, a fight in korea they're looking for a, a jiu-jitsu fighter to fight in korea i was like oh yeah let me let me see let me talk to the people and i talked to them I was like yeah it's a, it's a heavyweight tournament four fights same night and uh this that's is it. these are tournaments where there are tournaments where you win and you fight again yeah yeah those were the same night nutso yeah i there's not many people that fought four fights at the same night i think rice fought three yeah there was a fought. couple of those ladders i don't know if you fought four and i don't know many people that fought fight four i gotta look at the internet to see if i'm so there. you had four scheduled fights four on one same. night no if you win if you lose you if you win yeah, yeah yeah but if you win you have yeah. up to four yeah but up to four and then i talked to to my professor like hey man would it be cool but my idea wasn't wasn't win the whole thing because it was a heavy weight yeah and i was like middleweight so i was like what if we go and put up a show one good fight because that was in Korea, and there was Pride at the time. The yeah. Pride was the big pay. Pride was huge, yeah. Huge. Like, what if there's somebody from Pride there watching it, and mm -hmm. we put it up one good fight, kind of like Goliath against uh, yeah. the yeah. big dude, and then uh, they give us a contract, call us. I was like, yeah, why not? Let's try. And then I went. And I didn't have the striking background, yeah. only jiu-jitsu. Maybe that's what saved me. I didn't try to strike anybody. Uh -huh. Just the first guy, he was too big. He was like, I don't know, maybe 320. Big guy, su sumo guy. And you're 200? No, I was on 95. 195 versus, oh my gosh. Okay. He was a judo guy, sumo guy, big yeah. guy. And then I was like, I'm going to throw two punches and kick and run away from him. I didn't want to take him down. And it was one, two, one, two, move, one, two, one, two, move. And I won the first fight like this. Crazy. Second fight was a guy that was super strong, super strong, heavy hands. And I was just moving. I was like, I got to clinch this guy as quick as possible, you know, without, without he hitting me. Uh huh. And I took him down, tap him out in less than a minute. And the third Arm bar? Guy, yeah. yeah. And the third guy came in and then he clipped me with a left hook and he rushed into it and I took him down and I tapped him on the last in a minute. And the beautiful I, thing is at this point, nobody knows your background in jiu-jitsu. So they take you down. No, they knew. They <laughs> Did knew. they know? They knew because because the, the, the show was a setup. Okay. Set up for the guy that I made the finals with. Okay. They knew that, they. that's why they put me on the other side of the bracket because they wanna, the guy beat me so he could sell the guy to the pride. To the I pride, see, I you see. You know what I mean? So to make a lot of money. And then uh, on the finals, the guy was really good. Good wrestling, good boxing. The guy knocked me out and wakes me up. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see video of this. Cause Is this online somewhere? I don't know. But he threw a cross. I sat on the rope, and yeah. I was going to fall forward face first. Yeah. He thought I was shooting on him. So he tried to put me on a guillotine. 
and I woke up on a guillotine again. And I'm telling you because I saw a video later, not because I remember. <laughs> but that's kind of a wonderful position for you to be in versus him oh, punching okay, so, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. versus him keeping if, punching. If you. when he throw the cross, if he just walk back, yeah. I would fall face first. That is insane. So you wake up in a guillotine. I woke up in a guillotine. I escaped the guillotine. <laughs> we move a little bit. He pounded me. I almost had an E bar, and then we stood up again. He tried head kicking me, and I took him down, arm bar him in the first round. That was that's crazy. incredible. But let's go back now with the perfection things are because you asked me what make put me into MMA, right? Yeah. I was getting older, like 30 something. I was like, ah, oh, I don't think my fight career is going to last longer. Yeah. But I had decided I was going to do jiu jitsu forever. I was like, jiu jitsu and everything is going to link on the end. You'll see. It's like, jiu jitsu is not only competition, it's not only self defense. There's a sport jiu-jitsu and there's a uh, jiu-jitsu as a, as a martial arts for mm -hmm. MMA. I was like, I know self-defense. I know jiu-jitsu as a formation because I, I went to college for this, for PE and kinesiology, to know the psychology behind, to teach kids and everything. But I don't know MMA. Mm -hmm. And then I can work with it that too through jiu-jitsu. And I was like, I want to do one fight. I was like, I want to do one fight. That was my plan first. One mm -hmm. fight... Because it's different. I'm telling you what's different. Being working on corners a lot, there are situations that I know I could save the guy. Mm -hmm. Because being there, being getting punched on the face, being on a bad spot where you're about to quit mm -hmm. and know what goes through your mind is different than if you never step there. If you never be on that spot. I'm not saying there's great coaches out there that never fought before. Mm -hmm. But I think in my, for my 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 vision from my perspective that part that part helps me a lot to create a strategy and during the fight guide the guy through and you see that he's about to break yeah or make depends where he, he is on the fight or you can push the guy or you can hold the guy yeah during the fight i think that's that's a big thing for me because i had that experience from inside yeah so i need i want to have experience from inside that's why i went to mma i just, see just for that because yeah. I, I was already like, when I started in MMA, I was 34. It was also a time in MMA where, I mean, what was the what was the purse after winning that four fight tournament? The what? The, the purse, like the winnings. What, what was the, what did you end up winning after that? Not much. Yeah. This was a time in, I mean, even now it's difficult to make a career fighting. Uh, and by difficult, I would think extremely difficult. But 15 20 years ago the money wasn't there no. like at least it's a, an option now um where you're one of the pioneers of the sport and unfortunately during that time there wasn't it yeah, wasn't we, developed enough. we are not only on mma and jiu-jitsu as well yeah jiu-jitsu nowadays is totally different is is a see more serious more professional yeah well back in the day a lot of people they used to teach jiu-jitsu is just like a side gig yeah kind of you know what i mean like not many people Put the passion in and in, in, in the time even california there's a story there's a story before i get here mendes got here andre galvon got here salo ribeiro got here it was jiu-jitsu was different here yeah you know what i mean there was a lot of good professors great professors here mm -hmm. but it was more like i teach on the morning and i go surf and i'll come back at night and i teach another class and the next day i repeat it was more like the passion, the, you know, yeah. the easy life. And then when I came, when Drag of Home came, it was a hustle. We yeah. came here not to, since we were living home, you know, and we're going to sacrifice family and everything, we came here to hustle. All mm -hmm. day kind of thing, private teaching, hustling, you know what I mean? Like, And I guess I guess the people that look for jiu-jitsu back in the day was a little different as well. Today is way much more. The community grows so much yeah. here, but... Yeah, before like some of the, the the names that I say getting here, it was a as a different pace. If I put that way, different well, pace. Now Orange County, and I didn't know this at the time, but Orange County is kind of the mecca of jujitsu, is it not? California, California in yeah, general. I would say California in general. Yeah, San Diego is crazy. Really? Yeah, a lot of good guys in there. Orange County too. With Mendes brothers, Gracie Baja, everybody around here, like. All the it's, good teams there. Check Matt, everybody. It's, it's great. 
Yeah, I mean, for context, this is like, you know, I, I, I get into jiu-jitsu and I start coming to the gym and I start seeing faces that I've actually seen like on television. Like, mm. okay, these are actual, like these are fighters that are actually in the gym and, and people that are competing. Um, and for context, it's like, what other, I was trying to think, like this would be like joining, you know, a film school <laughs> and seeing like Ron Howard there, <laughs> like on a daily basis. And you're like, what, what, what is this? I don't understand this. And then that's when Lee was like, dude, Orange County is like the mecca of jujitsu. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I did not know that. You know, it's a thing. One other thing that's interesting in jujitsu, right? Like, I like basketball. I like Lakers. Yeah. Even if I was a good uh, basketball player, or my chance to play side by side with LeBron James or Kobe Bryant. Exactly. It's, it's not a thing. I like to watch uh, baseball. I like Tiger Woods. Yeah. What are my chance to play side by side with Tiger Woods or trying to beat him? Yeah. In jiu-jitsu, you start like, you start like you're gonna see your idols there at the yeah. beginning when you start the journey. A couple of years later, you might see, be facing them on a mat. Depends on your commitment. Yeah, that's you know what's what I mean? crazy about it is even yeah. just to see them yeah. in the in the same place. Yeah, there's, like, there are guys that I grew up watching them, and then seems like a couple of days went by. I was like, whoa, he's on the other side. It's <laughs> me and him now. Yeah, it's it's something that's really cool in jiu-jitsu too. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a really fun part of the craft. So, that for MMA, so just to, I don't miss the track. Yeah, what puts me into MMA was just to try to get an experience to work with afterwards. You know what I mean? So you knew, but that I end thing. up, but I end up no, but then I fall in love too, mm -hmm. and then I end up doing twenty one fights. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did twenty one fights. That's Eighteen crazy. and three was my record. Eighteen and yeah. three. Yeah. I won the tournament, and then I fought Elite XC, fought Bellator, fought on other shows. It was really like, because I, like, it's like this. When you learn the process, on your craft, you yeah. know the process. When you pick another thing to do, it's frustrating in the very beginning. Yeah. But you know the process. You know what you got to do. You do. For sure. That same process you can apply. Yeah. Yeah. For everything that you're learning. When you learn, when, when you... When you learn something that you fall in love with, that you, you learn the process that you go through and you succeed and you look at back like, I went all of through this and I get to this point. If you choose a new thing, you know the process. You know yeah. what you gotta do step by step to, to succeed as well. So I think that's what like makes me, me move on that direction. Well, I think that's what made me gravitate towards your teaching style, the entire gym, the one jujitsu as a gym, because personally, I, I don't feel like I'm, 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 I feel like I'm of average intelligence. I don't think I'm like a, a smart person. And the only things that I can learn, like I, I realized 20 years ago that the only way that I learn is if I learn why, if, if you give me a math equation, I need to know why it works that way. If you give me a camera, I need to know why, like you can't just show me there's, there's a lot of people that are naturally talented. Um, they can pick something up and just go and create and, and do that. That's not me, but I have a work ethic. And if you teach me why, then I can actually learn and do something. And the very first of your classes, I would, I still ask stupid questions, but I don't know if you remember some of my early questions. It was like, professor, why do I want to be in Mount? <laughs> like, like, why is that? Why is me being on top of the other guy a good thing? <laughs> you know, you know, not many teams look, not many people look for the why. Simon Sinek, you read it before I yeah, start yeah, with why. Yeah. It's a tremendous book. It is a good book. And then book. since the very beginning, I was reading the book. I was like, huh, that's why I'm this way, because I, I always look for the why. Yeah. I want to know why. And why jujitsu? Why that way? If you don't start that way, if you always keep thinking of the final product, maybe that's one thing that put me in the position that I am today. I never, oh, the way that I start. Mm hmm. I never think you just uh, financially mm -hmm. in the beginning. I never. You never thought it was a, a route to Financial, financially. No, provide. I never, never thought that way. Like, oh, I'm going to do jujitsu and I'm going to be rich and I'm going to do this. Yeah. I never thought that way. I fall in love with the process of learning everything about jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in a position that I am today. I can live my life through it. And then if you look back, a lot of things, a lot of things that people do, first thing the f the first uh thing that makes you fall in love for the for the professional 
becomes a profession after it starts as a hub mm-hmm. and then you start doing so well putting so much time into it and then you start getting really good at it. yeah but i'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that people think i'm like oh man if i'm do this i'm gonna be rich and then they fail yeah they look at that's one of the things that i i talk about a lot when i instruct is um you know you look at photography and you say i want to be that i want to be the person that has the followers that's flying around that's doing the big jobs that's doing all that and they fall in love with they have a passion for the result and i'm like no you need like if you're going to use the four letter word passion which i think is it might as well be on the same line as like an f word i hate that word because everyone thinks that they're passionate about something and i say no if you're going to be passionate about something be passionate about the process like every step in between is the part that you need to love not the result the result will come as a byproduct but nobody gets to the result because they use that as their motivation they realize that that's 10 years away process and they 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 don't get there so mma 18 and 3 was that your 18 and 3 that that today is a world-class record yeah that kind of blows my mind yeah i'm pretty happy with what i did especially because i have 16 submissions yeah two tkos no one by decision and one by tko all submission and these submissions is where you got your name the arm collector excuse me yeah (laughs) (laughs) i think of the water (laughs) i can't cut that off (laughs) you're good you're good (laughs) that's by accident so uh that's for me like everything has got to be it's one part in class that I teach. Like I always like to relate it to class because it's easy for you to understand. There's times that I'm teaching like, okay, you can't sweep this way. Yeah. And this, that's the result you're going to get yeah. as a white belt. But I'm not training you to be white belt forever. Yeah. And we look for perfection here. Yeah. So you can't sweep this way. It takes a little longer, the process, because you got to master this piece here. Yeah. But you're going to land in a better position. Mm-hmm. This is a perfection on the technique. And then for uh, for me, it was always about this. Like I didn't, I never planned on getting a fight and get an arm bar. And I had on the end, I had thirteen. <laughs> if you look at if that's crazy. <laughs> if you look at look at that's him. <laughs> look at Sher Dog. Wait, look at what Can Anthony you, pull up. Uh, Sher Dog, put my name in there and look at records. It's a funny thing to see. You'll see. What is Sher Dog? I don't even know what that sure is. Sher Dog is a website that you can find fighters. Oh, okay. Sure, sure dog? dog? Yeah, he's got it right here. I'll, there we go, right there. There we go. Now pull it up, go record. Pull it up. Uh, 18 wins, holy crap. No, 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 but, but pull, lift, lift the, 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 the page, please. Uh, more, 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 more. I don't think it has everything. Submission arm bar. A lot, look. <laughs> arm bar, arm bar, arm bar, arm bar, arm bar, arm bar. First round, first round, first round. I have that's a, crazy i think i have a 10 straight on the first round that's insane i think that's a record too i don't know but i have 10 10 straight on the first round but i never i want to tell you i never step on a cage thinking about it, i'm gonna arm bar somebody you that is so critical talk about that like w- w- explain that mentality for me like i was always always about jujitsu you know what I mean? I tell like the fighters that I train mm-hmm. them today. Uh, and that's some things that make me like love and trust jujitsu too much. And then that's why I think it's so beneficial. Mm-hmm. I always like prepare myself physically, mentally to get in a cage and get the job done. Yeah. Through punches, through whatever, whatever it takes. But every time we're open, that's my, uh, my strategy for fight. Every time you want to open space, it's a lottery. Yep. Right, I yep. might be the best strike ever, but if you land one punch on my jaw, mm-hmm. I'm down. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't know what's gonna happen after that. So my that's my that's my stress mm-hmm. when you're in the open. But the moment that I clean you, I I used to talk to myself. I'm home. Yeah, you're that's in your world now. Say, I'm home. Yeah, you know. And then most of the times, like we are almost there. But if I take you down, I'm home. Yeah, you got nothing on me. My confidence is like 200%. Yeah. If I take you down and I'm on top of you, if even if I'm playing guard, you're not going to, on this scenario here, on this part of the fight, you're not going to beat me. Mm-hmm. You don't have skills to beat me. 
that's how much I try to master jiu-jitsu for MMA. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, nah, here, I won't lose to you here. If you punch me on the face standing, I'll lose to you. But on the ground, I won't lose to you. No, you're yeah. not going to. Your sweep is not gonna be better than mine. Your pass is not gonna be better than mine. Your submission is not gonna catch me. Because previous to the fight, I stud a lot my opponents and I know what they have. You know what I mean? If your hand's super good, I'm gonna clean you as fast as I can. Yeah. You know? So, and I always this, I was trying to master. But but then you think about it, right? Art of war. What's your, what's your, what's your weapon when we're fighting? You wanna punch me? Yeah. I gotta take your weapons away. Yeah. I gotta grab your arm. You yeah, well, mean? even if I grab your neck, you still have two hands to peel the neck off. Yeah, to defend yourself, to get somewhere else. If I control one of your arms, I I'm taking your mobility away. Yeah, and I think that's what it came from. And then every time people try punch me, psh, I'm gone. You that's know? crazy. Well, it, it's interesting. I, I wonder how much it relates to. Um, I think about other things like so. So, so oftentimes we fall into. Uh, you know, you've only done one thing, and so your mind only goes to that one thing. But if you have, if you've kind of mastered a series of, of steps in a process, then you can kind of go to the piece that gets you to the best result. And the way that I think about this is like in, in photography, you'll get photographers that will bring every tool they can possibly have to a shoot. And they'll have their flashes and every lens and everything. And just because they have all the gear, they think that they have to use it every single time. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So like they bring a flash and they go into a shoot and they completely ignore the fact that you could take a photograph with an iPhone and it would look great as it is because the light that's there is already perfect. They think I got to use the flash and they ruin the shot because they're only thinking about the flash. Does that not work the same in this where you can go into it and completely miss every possible opening and opportunity because you have one thing stuck in your mind it can happen it can happen sometimes because but i'm not like that like i never fought the way they're like oh i just want to arm bar because that's what people thought the fight that for the very first fight that i lost i got criticized a lot yeah i got really like criticized the point that like it kind of <laughs> bothered me a little bit because it's like I, it was a split decision that I think still that I won the fight because I think I did, did way too much damage. It was the first fight that I think I fought stand for that long. I fought three rounds. The yeah. very first fight that I, that I fought three rounds. All the other fights I finished in the first round. Mm -hmm. The very first fight that I fought three rounds, I lost uh, by split decision. They say that there was a knack in there, there was another submission in there, and I only want to take the, the, the arm bar. Mm -hmm. But then when I look at the fight back, I was in knockdown. Nobody saw it, but I wasn't. When, I, when he, I kick him, mm -hmm. nice body kick, but I fell back and I hit the, 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 the fan, the fence, and then he came crazy. So I changed level to shoot and he got me with the uppercut. I see. And my so you're dazed at that point. No, my ears start buzzing. Dee, yeah, and you know, like everything goes in the slow motion. And I took him down. It seems like I didn't have a grip. I didn't have strength. I didn't have pressure because everything I did, he was like spinning out and escaping and creating scrambles. Like, what's going on here? But yeah. I, even, I never been on the on the spot before, like, and knocked down. And then I lost like tons of submission. He survived the first round. I don't remember one thing that coroner says to me on the second crazy. round. But I fought through and I just used my instinct. You know, cut his face, elbow, yeah. use all the strike that I have. Like I brought all the tools. But I ended up losing. But that's the only time. But other than that, there was one <laughs> there was one fight, it was one of the last one in Korea that I had I, the kid punched really hard. He yeah. suplexed me and then I put him on my guard. From the suplex? Yeah. No, I fall. Okay. Then I put him on a okay. guard. And then he was trying to ground in panels, controlling the arm and everything. And then I swept him. And I got a, I had the arm choke. Yeah. Because when I swept, I was like, I'm home. Yeah. I was telling myself, I'm yeah. home. <laughs> and I had the head and arm choke, nice one. And then I was like, the arm's right there. <laughs> I was like, I started fighting with myself. I was like, the arm's right there. You can't turn turn this into an arm, but the arm's right there. 
I was like, no, don't mess that one up. Just finish. <laughs> and I got I got a, a arm try on. Yeah, don't mess up what's right. right. No, but I, but, that's what but, I love is that but you I, said. I, I, uh, I, I thought about the arm bar. I was like, you thought about it. I was like, no, just, just do your, your job. It was, a, it was a funny, because I had so much control on the floor. Yeah. I never had any problem, like top or bottom. Like people ask me now, nowadays, like, oh, but the guard is, guard's obsolete nowadays. Nobody fights on a bar. No, fight because you don't put time in there. You don't spend time there. The way that I developed my guard from the bottom, okay, so I have friends in Brazil. One of them, I'll say his name, so maybe he gets this one. <laughs> his name is Alfredo. Okay. Alfredinho. Alfred and Fabio. Fabio's nice grounding pound. And then yeah. sometimes on practice, I put gloves on those guys. That was not even a MMA fighter. Was like, and then Alfred was a boxer. Yeah. Besides black belt and jiu-jitsu. And uh -huh. I tell like, hey, put the gloves on. Hit me as hard as you can. This try, isn't a sparring. Like, try knock my head off. Like yeah. I'm on my back and yeah. he's on my guard. Like, oh, I see. Okay. Try knock my head off. That gives me so much stress because I know he would do it if he yeah, could. Yeah. Because he, he got me a couple of times. But I know if he could, like, put me to sleep if he could. And I kept, like, finding angles and tightening up and then controlling arm and everything. And I was like, why don't you punch me? Like, and he frustrated. Because I can. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> because I can. <laughs> I was like, okay, that means that's work. So that's how I got so much confidence on me on my back on MMA. That's yeah. why I kick a lot of people because like, yeah, take me down. So what? Yeah. So I never have a problem in there. Yeah. What, what clued me into this was when you said I was never looking for the arm bar, but you had 16 arm bar. And, and that, that to me is somebody who is incredibly trained well, but ready to use any tool. You're not, you're not looking to, but you fall into it naturally and then you go and you take it. Um, but I think when you're first learning any craft, whatever it is, we tend to like stick to that one thing we can do. And it almost becomes our downfall because that one thing that you start getting some success with um, and for an artist, it might be, oh, this one way of painting something is the first thing that people like. I'm just going to keep doing more of that. And eventually people get bored. And they're like, I don't know how to do anything else now. And for the fighter, it might be that one technique that they first start winning fights with. What is for jujitsu fighters? For jujitsu, is that key lock from the half guard? Huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have tried. There were so many cases where, like, I would have my guard and I'd have the Kimura and they'd be defending the Kimura. Oh. And I just didn't know what to do next. And I'm like, yeah. just keep fighting. Try and get it. That's yes, two things. If you're on the bottom, like you try Kimura. And if you're on the top, you get to the half guard. Yeah. And you want to kill lock the yes, guy. Yes, yes. You don't even want to pass the guard. No, I don't need to pass. You just kill lock him here. And I was like, they're not going to work forever. Like, same thing you say. The paint gets boring, right? Like the first way yeah. to paint. It's the same thing. Like, they're not going to work forever. It might give you some joy right now, but that's not the... the the biggest draw you're gonna have in jiu-jitsu because after a while people learn that you're always gonna go in here behind the arm and then you didn't pass the guard yeah so you can't progress and you don't have the key lock right so it's the same thing that you say according to, to painting like and then i try i try to block that in practice mm -hmm. for the students if you I do you do if i well. see you doing things like repeatedly yeah and you're already good at it, it's like how much better you, you gotta get on this like yeah. i said in the beginning I was like, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to do this anymore. I yeah. blocked like, and you can't do that. Why not? It's a Lego. I was like, yeah, but not here. Mm -hmm. You got to learn something, new skills, something else. Because that's what I said. Like, I had knee bar. I finished people knee bar. I had an arm triangle. I have all the submissions. It's just, I think, just the arm bar was just natural for me. Mm -hmm. Because I have all the self-defense on the back of my mind. Like, if I control your arm, it's not punching me. To be honest, that's how I usually think on the very beginning. I'm gonna get your arm, and I'm gonna break your arm. Mm -hmm. if you might not tap, but if you stand up again, the arm not gonna punch me. <laughs> Self defense. Yes, I know. You know what I mean? The arms. You got. You only gonna have one weapon. That's how I always thought. That's how I always think about it, right? But nowadays it's more like a show, right? You gotta go over there, dance, make a show, because there's a lot of money in the line. Yeah. Back in the day, it's more like prove who you are, make a name for yourself. You know, become a legend. There was no the money wasn't everything. Wasn't there. Nowadays, nowadays it's like more money. One of the interesting things, um, I remember Erica posted a 
photo of you. I think it was to, to Instagram or something. She posted this picture and um, you were sleeping. And, and I think you were on a ride to one of the weddings, actually, that you guys were for one of the students. And uh, I messaged her and because you look so peaceful and like you have a very kind face, you have kind eyes, a very kind demeanor. And I think that's one of the things that people don't understand about most fighters Thank is you. that they're incredibly kind and humble people um, who can murder you. But <laughs> but she sent me, she had this picture of you posted and I sent her a message and I was like, nobody would ever know, like just looking at Jiva, that he can literally take your head off. And so I'm curious, just from my per, this is one of those funny questions I wanted to ask. Have there been moments in life where people just try to pick fights with you, thinking like they can? Tell us. And tell <laughs> tell me about those. That was one that was. Really <laughs> no, I started laughing. That was like a couple times. The serious one, and there's like, I was uh, getting on a parking lot. I think it was in a supermarket or something. This is in California in or Brazil, in Brazil? Brazil? Okay. And it got cut me off. Yeah. Cut me off really hard, like the, he was going to cause an accident. Yeah. He just want to get in, get in. But he cut me off. And then I was like, yeah, I just did this. <laughs> and then we were going to the same spot. Then he parked, gets out of his car, and I was with my sister. Okay. My sister, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> And then I got out of the car. He jumps out of the car like, so what? What are you going to do? And I look at him. I look at my sister. My sister. It's like, let this one go. Please, please, please. Don't, don't, don't. And he has his wife with him. I'm assuming it was his wife. Yeah. My sister like, don't, don't do anything. Don't, please, don't, don't fight him. Don't, don't, don't mess with that. And I keep talking and talking and talking. And I was like, I closed my car. I was like, okay, I just gonna ignore him and then we got into <laughs> we got into the supermarket oh, no. and i'm moving around and then he like comes like facing me and look at me and i just look at him my sister hold me i didn't say one word i keep looking at him and then he passed by talking a lot and then my sister look at the guy he's like you have no idea what you're doing <laughs> You have no idea what you're doing. Oh my Just goodness. let it go. Because she talked to me. I let it go. Yeah. But the guy kept pushing, right? Yeah. And my sister just looked like, you have no idea what you're doing. Just let it go. I don't know if the guy was a cop or had a gun or something. But he was pretty confident. Yeah. And I just kept quiet. And one time, I was on a party. My sister, she's a teacher. This is a different story. Yeah. Okay. My, my sister, she was a teacher. And she was, she invited me to go to the her her students graduation and then they have the the prom the party and my mom was there sitting down and they were playing like 60 musics yeah and then i was like super athlete at the time not drinking nothing and anything and then my mom and her old friends like hey let's go dance and then this young guy drunk like crazy started going around and mess with the old ladies right what the heck yeah and i called the security and i was like you hey, see that guy he shouldn't be here anymore. He drink too much. He messed with my mom. He messed with the old people here, being really disrespectful. It, yeah. This is on a club, like. Yeah. And then that's this day I lost my cool, but they caught me before I do something stupid. Yeah. And then the guy messing around, my mom's dancing, and the guy look, and I was looking at the guy the whole time. And besides being a military, knows how who works security, everything. I was just sitting there like a bouncer, like just looking. <laughs> And then he bump on his friend, look at this, I'm gonna mess with that lady. And then went in my direction off my mom. Oh, he had man. a suit on. I grabbed him behind the suit here. Yeah. And I was gonna pull and then I'm gonna toss him. Yeah. And I'm gonna beat him up. But when I'm, the moment that I put a hand on the suit, five guys already hold me. I was like, take your hands out of me. I told you, I warned you, right? Now, if you stay inside here, I'm gonna beat you, you, you point to everybody all the secured yeah you all gonna get beat up put him out of here and then they put him up but i didn't have to get to stream and fight yeah because i always like keep the cool because i know that was not worth it you know what i mean that's what's interesting going back to that question of like you know uh violence and 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 this kind of stuff i i don't feel like number one usually the people that are asking those questions are people that haven't gone through anything 
crazy or difficult in their lives. Usually they're people that have had very fortunate upbringings. They've never grown up in the slums. They've never had to fight their way out. They've never had to do any of those things. So that's usually number one. Number two, they have no idea that in general, the people that I meet that are the most capable of hurting another person are usually the ones that are most humble and restrained. It's the ones that have this insecurity and this lack of confidence and this desi- and this wild desire to hurt that they don't they don't do martial arts they don't do any of those things those are the ones that are actually perpetrating the kind of things that you think they're doing yeah so it it has this very unusual stigma um, and, and I, I feel like when people actually get into the craft they start realizing for what it is which it's it's called a martial art for a reason like there is so much artistry and physics and and technical pieces of what it is that you do um but the the perspective was always interesting and knowing your story now i feel like i have a better idea of why you grind so hard like i i i can see where you got your work ethic from Uh i would also think that you know 2020 has been a one of those years where I, i i feel like people that have not had a chance to build something and lose it they've really struggled because they've never lost before. They've never, you know, had to face what it is to know defeat and to get back up and to do it again. But I would imagine for you, this is not, this is, well, 2021, we'll get back up and do it again. Just got to keep pushing. Just got to keep going. There's no quitting. Like you, you have to, there's, again, there's things that you can't control, things that you cannot control, right? Yeah. So I don't work with the things that I can't control right now doing the things that I have to, hoping for better days, but keep moving, keep doing the things that is possible to do. Yeah. You know, like you said, like the background, like what I grew up, the things that I did, that's that's make me like the the man who I am, the way that I that I that I grind that I grind looking for things for to succeed to 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 be better. There's no uh for me there's no like obstacles that you can uh you should turn your back on and walk away. Yeah. Like that's a big one. Where I'm gonna start start attacking this from, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's always I think that's the the way that I that I see things, and then that's like I have students in the past that just because they've been through all of this in yeah. life, the preparation, and people are like you crazy out of your mind stepping on on a, on a, on occasion like fight somebody I was like hey man it's me just me and another guy and there is a ref in between if something goes wrong the ref will stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Grow up like on the middle of nowhere, seeing shots, gunshots every day. No refs, no. Starving for four days, like no food, no hope on getting food in anywhere. Like seeing your mom crying because she can't provide. What hurts me most is not that I didn't have food to eat. Things that I, I got to look back at this every single time mm-hmm. when I'm doing something or I'm about to take a decision. This is a thing that I don't tell many people, but I'm okay to talk here. At one point, then when my dad left with us, my mom lost the job, and then uh, we were four. But my sister, she, my mom was lucky enough; she was the only girl. Not good for a girl that's not mm-hmm. a, assisted, like live on a slum, yeah, by herself, Very right? Like with, the, and she was the older. So my mom was lucky enough to put her in a convent, you know, live with the nuns mm-hmm. and study in there. She find a, and then it was me and my other two brothers, and then. At one day, my mom's like, no, we don't have food. And the second day, we don't have food. Third day, we don't have food, just water. You know, and then she started crying. And then that thing is like, I was little. That thing like hurts me so much. And then my mom, she's a seamstress. Mm-hmm. And then she, uh, we went to the convent that my sister was, my sister stayed there the whole time. That's mm-hmm. what the deal. She couldn't come home. She only come home certain weekends. Yeah. She was like intern there, like the, she couldn't leave. And my mom went there one day and like, hey, I know how to fix clothes. I can sew, I can, could you just let me fix your clothes for uh, food for my kids? And then uh, the lady's like, oh yeah, you can fix our clothes. And then they give us a bag of soup, that the one that you add mm-hmm. water on. And then that was the best meal of my life yeah. till this day. You know what I mean? But that part that see my mom crying, that every time that I take a decision to do something, it, it comes back to my memory, you know? So I always got to think about that for decisions that I'm going to take for never quit and do things properly. So I think it's a, 
there's a certain strength come that comes from adversity and i i almost at this point in my life i feel like it usually takes somebody who's had adversity to recognize that strength in somebody else. Yeah. It usually takes someone who's been through their own. And I, I love platforms like this where we can have these kind of conversations because too often in regular everyday conversation with just people who haven't been through any of those things, there's no understanding, no empathy, no perspective that comes through in the way that they communicate. And it's very visible for people that have gone through difficult things. Um, it is very visible. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. And now coming through the other side, we have the gym, one jujitsu, which I'm obviously Beautiful. encouraging everybody to come. It Thank is not you. only impeccable in, in every possible way. Actually, your photographs are impeccable too. I think I might've done yeah, some of those. I know, I know that guy. <laughs> but um, it's also, it, it also happens to be, so instructionally, it, it, I've already talked enough about it. Um, it's incredible, but it's also probably the cleanest gym I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's, that's like I said, like let's put it together a little piece now. When I came here to stay first time was 1999. I was walking through Seattle, yeah, the city that I came, and I saw a um, Aikido dojo. Uh huh. And it was closed, but I could look. You know, and you can put the hand to see through. Yeah, the, yeah. I was like, whoa, that's a white canvas. That's a white canvas. And I never send that in Brazil. It's unusual. No. Nobody no. uses white canvases. And I'll tell you why they don't. <laughs> and I was like, I want to have a gym like that one day. Yeah. Neat, clean, where p people can come in and train and, and and feel good about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it happens. So I have the vision like probably like 1999 when That's I was crazy. walking in Seattle. Yeah. People don't use white canvas in Brazil because they don't don't clean the mats like the way we clean here. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. They used to clean. Today it changes a lot. People that want to be on a business, they know what they gotta do. I have a personal experience that I had an affiliate in there. And then I suggest like if you could put a lighter canvas in there, I would appreciate. And mm -hmm. there were two partners, right? And then one comes like Jiva, I didn't find a white one, but I have a gray one. Mm-hmm. That's one side is gray, the other side is black. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, cool, make sure you put the gray one. And then he put the gray one. And the other guy, hard head, hey, I gotta adjust the mat, I gotta make some changes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix the mat. And then show him, show, black. Him, show him a picture of the game, change to black. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the gym that the people that I grew up with, like in jujitsu, first gym that I, uh, of course, different location, but the people that been with me since the very beginning. And then I went back one time in a meeting and we were sitting down all talking. I was like, why did Matt's black? Oh, because uh, when I changed it, it was hard to adjust the grace. I was like, no, 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 don't, don't take me as a stupid. Yeah. No, I know what you did. I know you did that. You know why you did that? Because you don't want to clean the mat every day. Mm -hmm. The black doesn't show that's dirty. Mm -hmm. Right? And then that's okay. But I'm, let me ask you this. And look, everything black here. If you're a guy that walks in and never trained jiu-jitsu in your life, you see this darkness here. Is that inviting? Yeah. You want to roll on a black uh, tarp like this? You don't, right? But I know what you did this because you don't want to hire somebody to clean. Or maybe you don't have enough members to clean. Save time, save you, money. But if you keep that way, you're never going to have enough members to pay somebody to clean. I'm like, let me tell you this. When we opened the gym here for this one, yeah. the other one that you've been there too, yeah. it was me and Mo cleaning. Yeah. We didn't have enough students to pay for. We cleaned the gym every single day after class. I get home late clean bathroom, let everything need for the next day until you have enough members to be able to afford a janitor. I was like, at this point, I clean my gym, so you don't want to clean yours. So that wasn't off the part. And then I put it together. Again, I want a clean gym. I want a perfect gym that everybody can train. I want People, I want people that I want benefit for jiu-jitsu. I want a kids benefit from jiu-jitsu. I want a businessman that need to some kind of sanity. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes some people they're like in tough spot and big decisions, big company. I want that people. I want the people that want to chase their dream, go after a medal. Yeah. And I want the people that want to step on the cage that needs jujitsu for that. So I want a gym for everybody. If it's too dirty, I only have the people that the graduates in there. If it's too clean, people are not gonna go in there. But we find in between, we find a perfect gym, white canvas, uniform. That we have, we cover every aspect of jujitsu on our place. And you saw yourself, so it's a it's a wonderful place. We, I, you know, earlier in our conversation, you mentioned something about not having enough students, or how do you get more kids? We talk about like you know, some instructors wonder how you get more kids. And as a parent, when I came to uh, when I come to this gym, even even your old gym was still very clean, very well upkept, and that's frankly unusual uh, in in many ways. I know in Orange County, like we we have good gyms and there's good stuff going on, but um, in in like Puerto Rico and these places that I first learned jujitsu, it's not. It's dirty. I don't want to take my kids there. Um, but seeing the new place, designing a place that's welcoming and warm to each of the people that are coming is a huge difference. I actually feel comfortable bringing my children here, whereas I wouldn't take them in other places. And I think oftentimes people make these very short-sighted decisions like the, I can save a little bit of money by not having to clean every day. I can save a little bit of time. And this nearsighted thought hamstrings the business long-term because the. now they don't have the revenue that they would to be able to do basic things like higher cleaning. Yeah. But if, so I've had you here for two hours. So if two you. Two hours already? Yeah. Wow. Uh, just, I gotta make something, I gotta say something about. It. I'm coming from the, the third order country, right? Yeah. So, which is something I would train anywhere yeah. for Jiu Jitsu. But I wanted something that people enjoy to be there. But I, I didn't do this by myself, you yeah. know? I have a great partner, Mo. Yeah, I Mo's talk awesome. about him. That he helps me to because we, we go back and forth, right? Like there's things that I push him, there's things that he pushes me, and then we, we keep talking, right? Like, and then I ask him to the point that when I teach class, even even if you're not never gonna compete in your life, I want you to taste jujitsu the way it is. I yeah. want you to struggle. And overcome that situation. Yeah, I don't want to just pat you on the back every single time because that will be lying to you. So I want to just that way. And then sometimes I ask, well, am I being too rough here? Am I being too, <laughs> too hard on these people? He's like, no, you're doing the proper job. That's the way you should be. Because he most been with me since I came here the first day. One of the guys that I don't think he even know that. I think I connect with him because his quality. Mm -hmm. He was a blue belt. And then when I came here, that was not enough training for me. Mm -hmm. I was one of the toughest guard to pass. Interesting. That's why I like to roll with him a lot. And he was yeah. a blue belt and I was a red black belt. Yeah. One of the toughest guard at the gym to pass. Quality. Mm -hmm. And then besides that, really smart guy, does everything. The gym looked cool like that because video and everything because of him. So it's, it's a good thing. How we push each other back and forth. This mat look amazing. When we choose the place, there was a pillar on the center mm -hmm. that was unremovable, right? Mm -hmm. And I told him, like, they, they, people told us that was, like, cosmetic. We could remove, but when we, when we look at the place and start putting everything down, we saw that was uh, uh, structural. Structure, structure. Yeah. So, and he's like, he got upset, and then he's like, well, you got to go the way it is, kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? I look at him, he wasn't happy. Yeah. For me, it would be that way, but I know he likes the pictures, the videos and everything, mm -hmm. the, the pillar is gonna get in the way somehow. Mm -hmm. I was like, um, let me ask you this. We're gonna be on this building here for at least six years. What, what, what face you gonna walk through that door? Mm -hmm. You're gonna be like, man, the pillar is there. If that's the face that you're gonna get every day, we gotta remove the pillar because that's gonna be our house for five years. And I want you happy, and I want to be happy as well. Yeah. So let's figure out how to remove the pillar from the center, and we go with decisions like that with a good partner. Yeah. It makes things work work better. You know what I mean? Like he he does a tremendous job to make we look like we do. Hundred percent. Are Are you okay? I'm okay on time. So I'm good. I had a couple other questions for you. Go for. It. Um, because one of the things from my perspective, and this is what's fun, is instructor talking to instructor in completely different fields. 
but your level of patience that was one of the things that like kind of struck me when i was when i every time that you're coaching especially when you're coaching me because i know i i know it's early on and still now I'm, I'm i'm terrible now but at least early on i had no clue what the heck was going on um but you can be so incredibly patient with your instruction and i'm just wondering you are 30 years deep into this and let's say early on i'm rolling with somebody and i'm moving and missing 25 potential opportunities to like do something how do you not get frustrated on behalf of the, the students as they're not getting it how do you maintain that patience i i make them know that they should know <laughs> but in a good way you know what i mean i put it out there yeah but i always try uh, the best way i think the best way to describe this there's two types of this student right there's the i know students yeah and there's a student that listen to you i have way much more patient than student that listen the, the I know students. The I know students, they want like, if I tell like, bye, go that way. I know, I know, I know. Uh -huh. So you know, why are you going the wrong direction then? So that one, they don't have many patients. For that one, that's how it works. I tell once, I tell it twice, go that way because of this, this, this. On the third time, I was like, bye. And you say, I know, I'll walk away. And you're gonna be like, wait, you are? I was like, well, you already know. So what I'm gonna waste my time with? So if you already know. But it's a good approach. Yeah, but one thing that I do, I know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's how I always approach things. Mm -hmm. I know that you don't know. It's my obligation to help you to go through that situation. You know what I mean? If you, if you, uh, how do I say? If you, uh, if you're open for my my input. Like, pie, yes, sir, or yes, Jiva, or whatever. It's like, ah, you know, you could do this that way, it would be better. Mm -hmm. And then if you approach that way, but there's the people that they want, there's instructors, and then there's students that they want to show you that they have knowledge, even though you know that they don't. Mm -hmm. And then you got to keep in mind, I'm there to help you. No matter mm -hmm. what, I'm there to help you, to make you happy, succeed with the, what you're doing. And there's the students that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Even in photography, you're going to find those oh, guys yeah. like, oh, They're, yeah, no, this land here, I know. They pay to be, to, they pay to come learn, but they're not there to learn. They're there to show you what they know. Yeah, and exactly. And it's very unusual. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they don't want you to judge them. Yeah. But I have to judge your level of knowledge yeah. so I can give you even more or a little less. Depends, yeah. depends what you need at the moment. You know, and then there's students like that. But for me, it's always like, it's things that you learn on college too, like going through college, it helped me a lot. But my patience was always there. That's one thing that my family always say. Erica say like, I hope Mila gets all your patience. It's incredible. It, I would have to think, you know, your mother, your, your siblings, and just your general life experiences along with 30 years of jiu-jitsu has refined this to a point where I, I consider myself pretty patient with students, but when I saw you, I was like, there are levels to patience. <laughs> there, yeah. And yeah, I think it's something that I always had. Yeah. Especially like on the army. Uh huh. On the army, I was a, a, a lot of soldiers, like when I was a sergeant already, a lot of soldiers, they, they love me. Not yeah. because I was a nice guy, I was never, never a nice guy, especially in the army. You got. You gotta turn the kids uh, kids into men, mm -hmm. so you gotta be rough. But I was always polite. Mm -hmm. Where my friends were cursing everybody, calling their names, I was always polite. It's one thing that you don't say thank you for a soldier. Mm -hmm. in At least in Brazil, you don't. Interesting. Go get the mission done. Yeah. All right, good, get the hell out of here. Yeah. That's how it is, right? Yeah. And I was like, you gotta, you gotta please do that, get that thing done for me, please. <laughs> and they go do, you got it done? Thank you. Can live. Like this is so unusual. I was like that. Yeah, but then I always get what I want. Yeah. From the soldier, right? But the moment that I was like, God, when I yelled at them, they're like, Yes, sir. What did you do wrong? How can we fix? They knew if I yelled it because if something went wrong. Yeah. Like at the gym, sometimes you see like, like, Hey, we gotta do this right. Yeah. It's because it's getting to you. It's past a certain point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I know when's the right time to to push a little bit, but but the patient is, it's not a, 
It's not something that I got to work hard for. I don't know. I, on my sense, like if you're not getting something, it's not your fault. It's my fault. Interesting. That's it's a, always my fault. Uh, yeah, that's a very, I feel like most people would have to spend a lot of time deliberately developing that mentality and that patience. I had to personally. Um, so that's, and I, and I, I know that you're saying that it, this was always with you, but I have to, I have to in my mind believe that there, you're a product of those experiences, but there's also kindness and things that you've worked on along the way to, because anybody else in those, in those cases that you said earlier in, in the parking lot with that person, anybody else without the training, without the experience, without the ability to actually do what you could do to this person, anybody else would not show restraint and would probably get into a fight with the person. But you gotta learn to evaluate, evaluate, evaluate the situations as well. I think I'm fortunate enough because I, this is something that maybe people don't like to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. mm, and I don't wanna get into it. But there's always like right off speech, mm -hmm. racism, this and that and that. I, I don't get to that. I'm poor, I'm black. I'm military, I'm a fighter, so I can be violent, I know the laws, I'm a minority, and I come from poverty. Mm -hmm. So I have right of speech everywhere. Yeah. But I decided not to make this as like a, put myself in a victim position. Yeah. I know when people start arguing about those things with me, I don't like get to me, and I think that makes me remind calm. The fight with the guy on the parking lot, I gotta assess the situation. Why he wanna fight so bad? Is he having a bad day with his wife? Does he have a gun on him? Mm -hmm. On my point, did he hit me? No, did he hit my sister? No, he did not, so it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. You know, the assessment I make at the point, at the time, like, a lot of people wait for the thing hit them so they can analyze the situation, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm on a situation that's strange to normal, I'm already evaluating situations that that's possible. That's, I don't know if that's unique for me because I, I had the different life experiences, my backgrounds. It puts me in a position to, so I can evaluate things like that. Make yeah. sense or no? No, it does. It does. I mean, you've also from jujitsu as well as military training as well as just growing up in poverty i feel like the process of making those evaluations has to be fast it gets faster and faster and faster because this isn't like the first major decision you know a fortunate the the fortunate the people that i grew up around hmm. you know um i i so my father was an immigrant um we grew up very poor until i was about maybe 10, 12 years old, and then we were considered lower middle class, and I was with the other middle class kids. And the, the first difficult life decision that they had was, what school do I go to? Mm. Um, so they have a very slow process of like making important decisions, but I feel like when you grow up in such an environment with that pressure, you start to learn to see a situation and evaluate it split second because it can potentially be life or death. And then in jiu-jitsu, you refine that to the nth degree because you're making those judgments non-stop through the process of rolling it it's just something that i like to point out because it is very unique very interesting and something that most people don't i don't think that they understand truly how those how you get to a place where you can be so patient how you can get to a place where you can evaluate so rationally it's unusual it is <laughs> for you it's not <laughs> One thing, one thing that I, uh, that I, it bothers me in relationships since we got part of relationship talk, mm -hmm. it takes, it takes a lot for an offensive word comes out of my mouth. Yeah. Like, you know, you can curse on the mat already. That's one yeah, thing. No because, curse you know, it's, people think it's just because the word itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's there's parts of the day that I curse mm -hmm. away from everybody on my own. <laughs> it, it, it's what I describe with the cursing. It's like this. I'm going to hit a sweep on you. We're like, we're doing that roll that's really nice, back and forth, going, 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 and I'll hit a sweep on you. And you're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
It's not about the F. You're not offending me and anything. Actually, you give me joy because I get you out of your cool. I get you frustrated. Yeah. And that gives me joy. Ooh, he's out of the game now. It's only me. He's not dead anymore. It takes energy to say F too, doesn't it? And then your mind stopped stop yeah, working. Exactly. You're not, you're not rational anymore because you're thinking about you frustrated. Yeah. If you hit the same sweep on me, I was like, how is this happening? Where he has his hand? What? Oh, that grip got me. You're not going to get me like that again. Yeah. I think that moment, it's crucial to analyze the situation, like you said. What it's, a great technique. It's yeah. Oh, but you're not gonna get me with that again. So it's 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 a it's a crucial moment. But what a great life technique. I mean, this yeah. is by hitting I mean you you said see, most people don't realize that you said don't swear and they think just don't swear. But what you're actually saying is, no, the the emotion that's caught up is what I want you to prevent. I want you to stay cool in your mind. So that you can think through the process. And that's something that people could do on an everyday basis. Yeah, why this went wrong. Yeah. But you decide just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. And then you got to pick what was left. And then you don't know what the grip was. But this is for everything in life, right? If you think about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. And then what I'm saying about offensive word, especially like in relationships, right? Yeah. The curse is one thing. But, but think about it. You have like your partner your wife or everything and then maybe you guys having a rough day and you said something that hurts you love her to that you don't mean to say that yeah but you want to make yourself feel good or make her feel bad yeah but in the end of the day you gotta gotta fix yeah in the end of the day you do neither <laughs> yeah but maybe you apologize yeah but the word is there when it comes out of your mind you cannot pull back for me if i said something it's because i mean it Mm. you know what i mean and then i take really careful i make mistakes sometimes mm -hmm. it shouldn't say that but as the moment that i say it, it doesn't matter how heat we are in a conversation i stop like i shouldn't say that yeah i shouldn't have said that right there i don't let the fight goes on and on like hey listen i'm sorry yeah but some people are not like that you know what i mean and i sometimes i watch and then and the people discussing stuff like that, and like, oh, you this, you that, you this, you that. I was like, but don't you together? Don't you love her? Don't you love him? But why are you doing that now? Yeah. You're gonna apologize later, but the scar is gonna be there. You're gonna get a bigger scar, a bigger scar, then that's when the relationship goes away. This is for everything, in for business, sure. in life. Well, what you're really doing in that moment on the mat, by not cursing, by retaining your, 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 maintaining control you're maintaining ownership you have in that moment despite something bad happening to you mm. you got swept you didn't expect it despite that thing happening to you maintaining your cool puts you in a situation of control to be able to flip-flop it and if people could do that and pause and instead of letting the emotion get the best of them they could actually maintain control over situations that too often we kind of throw our hands up and go nothing i can do about it now now think about uh, this on the leadership point of view, right? Mm -hmm. We are sitting here and something went wrong and the boss is the man, right? He has to give us a solution or a guidance. And you go, hey boss, this happened. Throws everything away. Yeah. That was your last resource. Yeah. Do you trust him again? Yeah. No, you don't. This is why you are an incredible coach now on that uh, on the, the coaching side and this is the last thing i want to mention because in addition to the school which i hope i hope you guys uh those that are listening uh watching i hope you guys come and join me at the gym like they're it's an incredible place to be um but you're also you have several professional fighters now i do that are uh you've always had professional fighters but one um cheeto just came back he fought three times this year yeah he fought a lot that's crazy. <laughs> Three times going yeah. through that process. I, I, this last fight was with uh, Jose Aldo. One of, I was so incredibly stoked for this fight. Um, but in keeping cool and keeping calm, every time something doesn't go your fighter's way, I, I know your approach. Like you, it's the same thing. Things didn't go our way tonight. We're gonna retool, come back, and and get it again. Can you tell me about that fight? Uh, the fight was like was was a good fight for us because uh, I don't think uh, Aldo respect Cheeto too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he thought I was gonna be like I'm gonna walk through this guy. Yeah, 
and you you gotta know that Chito to see no and then no <laughs> and then he kind of like we kind of relate a little bit because he comes like kind of almost the same background I come just different country but he comes yeah. from and then the uh the thing was like we knew that we could strike him you yeah. know what i mean the game plan was set the rehearsal everything was good the only thing that didn't play well for us was the experience right because one thing that i because like I'll tell you straight up, like when was the last time you see Jose Aldo fight on the ground? Yeah, it's been a while. He nah, he don't want to be there. He doesn't like. He likes to strike. It's weird though, because isn't his background jujitsu? Yeah, he's a good good jujitsu person. But he just but he just become he, he just likes to strike. Okay. He's, he's, you know what I mean? He think he's better than everybody, and he's really good. Uh huh. But Chito was being able to. First round was him. He did good. Second round was going better for us. Yeah. Third one was the decision. For my my uh coach point of view i should expect to take down mm -hmm. i should you know what i mean and then we should control the distance more on the strike point we, we we're gonna do good on the third round yeah you know what i mean because he was getting tired and everything but then he surprised and it was that was great that's why he's one of the best you know what i mean yeah Chito got overconfident because that's when he grows you know what i mean like you look at him it's like okay we're gonna do this he's yeah. not shocked he Going understand the everything. Third round, he, it looked like he was going to go Cheetos. Yeah, way. and then yeah. he went too fast for Wood yeah. and ended up in the clinch and ended up getting his back take. And then at that point, and you're like, he wasn't going to try finish or wear his mouth too much or, or giving up on the back. I knew mm -hmm. he was going to control the back yeah. for as long as he could. You know, but it's, like you said, there's nothing that we can control about that. We can change the results. But we can change the upcoming fight. We can train it better for the. It sharpness. was also interesting because up until there, there may have been a mistake when when Aldo took his back. But at that point, Cheeto was doing everything right. Like he was trying to shake him off. Um, he he kept his position. He w dropped down to the knees at one point, and then that's when Aldo locked in that triangle, yeah. um, that body triangle. And it, but he was still defending every submission. He was trying to turn into it. The fence was kind of like. I was watching it and I was getting frustrated for him. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. That was like five minutes, four minutes. It was a good amount position. of time in that position. Yeah. So, but but uh, the moment that, that's why I was like in trying working hard to not get the back taking, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I knew like if he would take his back, that he wasn't going to finish. Yeah. He's not going to go for the finish. He's going to stay on the back. Just stay in there and control. Yeah, by experience. I had that situation before with another fight from the same camp, same team. And but the difference was the other fight that I had, I'll tell you, like was Ian Macau and uh, Josia Formiga, mm -hmm. and then uh, was in the first round, and then I know I'm not gonna tell here because we're gonna fight them again. I know the strategy on the team. Yeah, but then Formiga took Ian's back on the very first uh, minute mm -hmm. of the first round, and then I was like, it just told Ian. Just defend the choke. Just defend the choke. We're going to get him on the second and the third. Yeah. Because I know he's not going to force the finish. I know mm -hmm. he, didn't, he wasn't going to force the finish. Same thing for Aldo. Mm -hmm. I know he was going to maintain the position, which is smart, did the right thing. Yeah. And I know, but then the difference is like with Ian was in the first round. So we adjusted the other two rounds. With Aldo was in the third round. If it was a five round fight, maybe it would be better for us. But it was a three round fight, so that third round cost us. Yeah. That was uh, an exciting fight. It's it's incredible seeing Cheeto getting the matchup because that's a it's a wonderful matchup. Yeah, uh, I can't good. wait to see what he does next. The mm -hmm. the Sugar Sean one was really interesting too. I've rewatched that fight so many times trying to figure out when Sean O'Malley got injured. When what not it's not an injury, it's the kick that was the the kick? On, yeah, there's a muscle like right above your calf. The kick hits you there, and it hits your nerve. And so the, it was that. The leg goes numb. Yeah. I read that online yeah. somewhere that's saying yeah. that someone thought it was Cheeto's kick to the leg that basically yeah. did it that. It was. That's I, crazy. Somebody kicked him like that before in practice, thank God. Yeah. And then your leg's like, you cannot, the, the nerves doesn't respond, like doesn't do the synapse for contract the muscle, you know. That was what, what happened. Oh, that makes me kick. so happy because there's yeah. so much commentating going on about it being a previous injury, about it being, you know, mm -hmm. like this is a, 
and i was like but even if it was like a previous injury i went to fights that i have like a cracking rib but you never knew about it yeah after the fight i never comment about it you know it was using it as an excuse no, like, yeah i times. mean if i win yeah i'm gonna mention my injury i won't yeah if i lose i have to mention my injury no yeah that's a weird thing no, right this no, whole no, no if you took the fight you take like 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 a champ yeah you know i mean yeah if you take the fight everything goes away you can you can call the the, the promoters like hey i'm injured yeah no i'm not going we have situations like hey i'm injured but i'm still gonna step up for you because let's save the show let's do this that's when you which i had kind of on the line yeah you know for contract and stuff like that make it clear that you're going you know what i mean because you show like that you're professional so for you're sure. not gonna pull it out that you're going and probably gonna lose because you, you, you can perform well but if you take the fight and you say that you're gonna fight don't bring up the injury yeah I keep on the backstage the people that should know about it but you go to fight you're gonna fight it's an unusual thing and i feel like it's so transparent to see you know when somebody wins or loses it's yeah. very transparent to see into their who, the way they think by you know when Boricina did that too um yeah. against adesanya when yeah. he kind of came away and he yeah. was like that was a that was a whole nother thing my tell like when you catch right away when the fight start talking like this like yeah you know uh not taking anything away from the fighter yeah but but <laughs> as you as lost you lost me right there i don't want to hear what you got to say <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. When you say that, not taking away from him, but 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 I'm not here anymore. To and it happens me. so often. It's yeah, like at this no, point, no, it doesn't don't need to sense. know that. Go to that fight. I fought fights with broken ribs. Yeah, you know, not broke, but like really, like got crack them on the rib pretty bad. But like we to close off the fight. We need to fight. Let's yeah. see what we can do. Yeah, if you, you take know? it, you take you it, go. you take it. Yeah. Oh, also, there's fight that I have to pull out because I had bad injuries. Like, and I can't fight this this way. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. But that if makes you sense. Take too. it. Go for. It. Well, Jiva, I can't say how awesome this was. You are one of my favorite people in the world. Um, oh, thank you. I love everything that you do. I can't wait to see what your teams do in terms of all the professionals that you have underneath you right now. Uh, man, we're doing good. Like, bummed the last of the the end of the year because Alex lost the the, the title yeah. shot. He he lost we made a mistake in there and that's all right fixed yeah we are already looking for the next opportunity there's a girl that in lfa lost the title too so there was two big loss on the end of the year yeah chito fought well it was a great fight despite the results and crystal won on the same day on the morning yeah you know i mean we have a good like group of ufc fighters like training with us now and uh i'm not right now like what we're planning to do the gym is going really nice, like on the sense of everything we set up for the new, this new place. Mm -hmm. Hopefully things get better for everybody so we can keep moving on. But the pros, they are pros. So they fight, they do the things the right way. Yeah. But I'm not developing right now, like on the sense of like you, you raw and you come to learn MMA to, mm -hmm. yeah, develop in, through jiu-jitsu if you want to, but uh, teach you how to punch or how to kick. No, this is, I'm just work with the pros, like high level guys that yeah. that they know the purpose, they know their why, yeah. they know why they're there, you know, they know like that to grind and then work hard and then don't say anything and then don't bring drama. Yeah, well, I love it. I, I can't wait to see what you do. I can't wait to see you and the entire team back in the gym. Um, We're excited and just waiting. Yeah. So. Meantime, uh, you guys can check out Jiva. You can check out One Jiu Jitsu at One BJJ Fitness. Um, you can follow the Arm Collector on Instagram as well. Yep. Yes. Jivos. Jivos. We will link up all your stuff. Um, and I appreciate you being here. And thank you for the opportunity. It's not. I think it's the first time I have a chance to tell my full story. And like, it's really interesting. The best of luck with the project here. I hope everything goes well and then goes smooth. And people like, I want to come back. I know we will come back here. We will for sure. Talk more, and it will be amazing. This is Thank just you. the first of our conversations. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Appreciate it.